Hello everyone and welcome back to the D20 Future campaign to catch up on where we were. Um, we have Jake Long, the uh, low orbit salvage technician, and we have Savrik, the cleaner for the Mafia. And uh, both of them joined a long distance rescue and salvage team. They got trapped on a moon base and since then they have discovered the dead are coming back to life and are trying to kill them. They have so far uh, dealt with completely silent corpses that have ripped the leg off one of their colleagues. They have traumatized the poor woman in the med bay and mugged her. They've killed a large number of animals by decompressing the hydroponics area. Jake and they killed a large number of animals. <laughs> and, they fe... <laughs> and, they... <laughs> and they fed one of their colleagues to the zombies while they ran away. So, so far the that campaign's going wonderfully. <laughs> So I couldn't see what was in that room. He just volunteered. <laughs> he could have said no. <laughs> so, so far the campaign's going just beautifully. So, uh, we find Jake and Savrak in the armory, uh, having led the zombies from the armory away and locked them in the hydroponics bay. And uh, they've gathered some ammunition and gathered some resources. Now, from what they've been told, the command bay is near the armory, uh, beyond the computer core. And they'll be able to do some command from the area, that area, and uh, that's the information they have available at the moment. So, what would you guys like to do next? Okay. First off, um, so we already lured all the zombies out of here. So there's no zombie bodies. Uh, I myself, Jake Long, will search Darren's body. I believe is still in here. Okay, so you go through Darren's body, and um, you find that he's got, of course, the standard spacesuit that you're all equipped with, um, and he's got some, um, well, he's got the holdout pistol, the magazine, he's got a mechanical toolkit, an electrical interface, and he was also carrying um, a very odd device. It looks a little bit like a rifle, it's a bit bulkier than a rifle. Um, it has a long cylindrical barrel that's probably about twice the uh, width of a normal rifle and where the cartridge would be on a normal rifle where the magazine would be on a normal rifle it has what in 2016 we would consider to be something a bit like a car battery it's a large um, seven inch by seven inch in by three inch <laughs> um, block of of uh, uh, battery that is connected up into the bottom uh, the battery itself weighs probably about four or five pounds um, and the whole thing, from what you can guess, appears to be some kind of primitive laser projection rifle. However, because this world has never seen laser projection rifles in mainstream use, this, you can guess, is probably some kind of prototype. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't have any string with them? He doesn't have any string, he doesn't have any wire, no. Damn. No, he didn't bring wire. <laughs> okay. Um, the the large battery unit. Did he have? Was he carrying a couple of those, or was it just the one attached to the rifle? He is just carrying the one battery unit attached to the rifle. <clears throat> What's the capacity of that if I was to try to use it on my quail ripper, or is it compatible? Could I make uh, it compatible? You would. You you'd have to jury rig it to uh, make it compatible. Uh, if you were to jury rig it into your coil ripper, you'd get forty shots. Uh, from the battery, so Ooh. double the amount you get from your single uh, single cartridge battery. Okay, I'm gonna take that battery. <clears throat> okay. Uh, what's um, the weight on that sucker? Uh, the battery itself is four pounds. Okay, so another four pounds. Okay. All right, while he's doing that, I want to check I, out what's these the three doors here. Interface? Uh, the electrical interface is uh, very similar to your um, electronics kit, but it has a, um, it's a little bit like a laptop, but um, can you imagine if you've got a laptop cracked open so that all of the connections are visible, all of the sort of like internal circuitry connections are invis uh, visible. Uh, so it makes it much easier to connect into circuitry to deal with uh, the actual software rather than the hardware of it. Um, from a mechanical standpoint, it gives you a bonus towards your computer use. I'm grabbing that. Okie dokie. And... sucked so far. Yes, your computer use hasn't been great. Uh, that is five pounds. The kit. The full kit. Um, so Savrick's uh, been checking doors. Yeah, so out the are any of them open? Uh, all, of them are all of them are oh, okay. locked. All of them are locked. 
um, having uh, cut open the door into the armory uh, from one direction, uh, the armory's automatic uh, protections have kicked in place, which means that we, when the armory is essentially raided, when the armory is illegally accessed, uh, all the other doors unlocked to make ease of access for security personnel. Of course, oh, okay. there are no security okay. personnel. Um, the door you're standing next to, Savrik, that uh, leads into a corridor. Because of where the door is positioned, you can't see anything in that corridor other than a tiny little slice. Yeah. Um, over on the other side, between the weapons racks, uh, you find two doors. Both of them lead out again into an obvious corridor. And again, because they're facing directly onto a wall, you get a very small slice. Uh, you can't see anything worthwhile through them, as far as you know. All right. Um, I'm going to hide, and I'm going to hide first and see what I'm going to do next. OK, so you get a decent hide. Um, that combined with your hide bonus would make your hide a 19, which is a pretty decent level of hide. All right, I'm going to head out to the hallway here to take a look, peek down, see what I can find. Go for okay. a uh, wander. OK, so you, you head down the corridor. You find that there are a couple of turnoffs to the left. Um, one of the turnoffs is um, actually labeled, which is very rare. You've only seen two labels so far in the entire base. Uh, the Turn off labeled is the second turn off to your left, and that is labeled as um, residential quarters. Um, oh, okay. And straight ahead of you is another door that leads to the large corridor that has the reinforced floor, which appears to be some kind of cargo transport corridor. You'd assume that connects back around to the cargo transport corridor, corridor that leads all the way down to the docking bay. Okay. All right, I'm going to. I'm gonna head back into here for now. And just... You're not gonna give anybody else um, time to do anything unless I speak up and make you shut nope. up. Nope. Okay, so I'm I... I guess I'm gonna come back here and wait. <laughs> uh, I want to spend a couple minutes looking around this room. I am searching for a replacement to my rope because Saravok's a dick. Um, <laughs> won't give my rope back or anything that may be able to be used or rigged to be a explosive or light fires. Okie dokie. Um, so roll a search check for me. Okay, one sec. Just dealing with something in chat. Alright, and while he does that, I'll actually take one of the uh, armored suits. Now, question, okay, so... is it like an armored J suit for the military currently in use, or what is this? Uh, basically, this is, um, this is uh, a what's called an armor over pack. An armor over pack is designed primarily for security officers. Um, and basically, it, it, it consists of a little bit like what we would assume to be a stab vest. But they're specifically designed to be expanded so that you can fit them over the top of uh, spacesuits if necessary. So they're designed either to go okay. over the top of your clothing when they're compressed, or when they're expanded to go over the top of spacesuits and things like that. Oh, you okay. fucking dick. <laughs> so... Um, Armory pretty shiny guns uh, is is what Blaster Toad manages to discover. <laughs> All right, uh, um, yeah, this, I'll roll that. Like, just take time to search the room. Yeah, you can take time to just hunt through the room. Yeah, uh, it'll take, take a few time minutes. to hunt through the room. <laughs> okay, so hunting through the room uh, over where you found <laughs> the um, uh, the mechanical arms that are used by the engineers, uh, you find uh, a couple of uh, backpacks which contain basic engineering tools uh, next to the pry bars, which include um, uh, some minwire roping, uh, a couple of hooks, uh, some basic uh, clamp connectors. So, for instance, if you were on a low gravity environment and you were trying to connect or trying to weld things together, you'd want to connect them with ropes and hooks first so they didn't go floating away the moment you started to input any kind of um, welding force into them. And th these are the sort of kits you find. Rope? Yep, you can take minwire rope. Uh, is there three of them that I can grab? Yes, you can hunt through the different bags and grab grab three 50-foot um, lengths of minwire rope. Nice. That's fine. Okay. So let and me that roll a that might be able to catch fire or set fire. Uh, you've got the batteries, which um, you know through your electrical engineering yeah, can, that if you I short really them don't out. Waste my shots, though. Nothing else. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as you can tell, like that, there, there's boxes of uh, pistol rounds. You could, you could probably break the pistol rounds down Ooh. and and gather gunpowder. That would take quite a long time. Um, but you could probably break down pistol rounds and um, 
gather gunpowder if you so desired which would be making rather sort of primitive uh, gunpowder or pepperjack mines okay. or grenades Seravok, we figured that would be useful we can sit here and I'm, make ourselves some I'm thinking yeah let's do that and uh, you said there's are there any extra batteries in the um, I grabbed them all. in the backpacks okay you grabbed all the batteries I okay grabbed or at least all the charge batteries. Magnet the coil, Ripper. yeah. Uh, there okay. are some okay. other batteries um, of varying sizes for things like um, circular saws. Uh, you've got some <laughs> drilling, drilling rigs. Uh, you've got a couple of okay. um, batteries for the pneumatic suits or for the pneumatic arm rigs. So you've got uh, got a, a set of different batteries you could go, get hold of. Okay, I so have a. Do you uh, have any camera. experience in creating weapons? So basically, does your character have any anything that would help make explosives so you can craft? I have. Enemy using a I have skill? chemical. I have chemical chemical crafting, which well, do some would shit with that. that. So okay, yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, basically, <clears throat> between the two of you with mechanical crafting, electrical crafting, and chemical crafting, and with the small amount of demolitions experience that Jake has, um, you could basically each roll a d20. Um, I'd give you, uh, allow you to use your highest one, which would be plus six for Toad and plus five for um, Savrock. I got an 18 with that plus six. I got a 17 plus five. So you both rolled really high. So I'll let you, uh, let's say, because you rolled so high, I will add an extra d6 in. You get to make four battery bombs and six gunpowder bombs. Okay, Fantastic. Take, each take half? Yeah, works for me. Okay, so you get two battery right. bombs and three gunpowder bombs each. And I'm assuming the kind of gunpowder bomb you want to make is one that would be quite effective against humans or quite effective against soft tissue, um, which basically means once you've broken down the bullets, you're going to wrap the gunpowder bombs in the bullets themselves. Shells. Um, yeah. In yeah. the shells. So you're essentially creating frag grenades. Um, I was thinking yeah. something more incendiary. Uh, uh, gunpowder itself doesn't particularly incendiarize very well. I know, it burns but I can too fast. wrap the gunpowder as an igniting primer into the backpacks if they are of a flammable material to make smoking fiery heaps uh if you wanted to switch out a couple of your grenades for basically I'm... um smoke yeah. bombs made from fabric uh, you could scavenge enough fabric together to make um, essentially sort of small smoke bombs but the fire wouldn't spread very well and what we have right now is basically well. okay so uh... what we have right now is basically Frag grenades, where it just it's gonna blow chunks off, so you, you can disable both legs, or you know if you I'm gonna switch manage to do something really sneaky. Grenades for smoke bombs. All three of your grenades. Or, before I decide which bombs to make or finish creating, I will come over to the computer terminal, yep. and with that beautiful new tool I picked <coughs> up, which gives me the additional computer skill. I want to check the status of the fire retardant system. Okay. And yeah, I'll grab a pry bar oh, from you as well. The... <laughs> okay. Oh my so, god. So even with the new tool, um, you interface, you manage to pull up the um, software controls for the fire <laughs> for the fire retardant system. Having pulled up the software controls for the fire retardant system. You then push the wrong button and shut down the fire retardant system accidentally. Um, you manage to reboot it, but as far as you can tell, like it's probably best if you don't start touching it again. Okay, but it's it's rebooted and you it's on. <clears throat> yes, it's rebooting on its own. You can tell that you can tell with a five and with the basically you could tell by going uh, looking at one of the uh, mobile screens in the base that the fire retardant system, as far as it as far as the computer really is aware, is, is working and actually okay. okay. So here you got is terrible. The thing. We have a um, hydroponic science lab. Mm. Yep. Okay. You know what that means for fire retardant? 95% chance that CO2. So it's not damaging the plants, and it's not damaging equipment, and it's not making a horrible mess you got to clean out of computers with liquid or foam fire retardants. CO2 is heavier than air. Let's just start filling these rooms with frickin' CO2. 
We'll be able to walk above it fine, but anything that's currently laying on the <coughs> ground is gone as long as we keep the room sealed for enough time. Okay, if you're gonna try to do that, you should let me roll and take that tech device with me, or to use it for this time, you because your dip. rolls... You, just, you stole my rope. No, your rolls... I'll trade you the rope for the device. How's that work? I already got three ropes. <laughs> yeah, now you can have four. <laughs> I'm keeping my supercomputer and everything. I'll give it... Okay, fine. I'll give it back to you. I just... I'll, let me roll for this, because your rolls have... Uh, dude, I'm free. To you're going like, to, like, blow up the entire shit. I room? I don't know. I don't trust you. bombs in it? And then lock all the doors with my remote door device. And all let right. the fire alarms do their thing and smoke people out. <clears throat> Until you throw it into a room that's full of some explosive gas and it blows your ass to bits. It should take a little while to ignite that. Oh, uh, I'm gonna stand I, on the other side. You know what? Or I'll let you chuck it for me, bitch. Alright. You, you got Which the better door explosive stuff anyway, first? so... yeah. I'll I also have... You know, I also have the thermos of detection, so I mean, I'll be checking that shit out. <laughs> Therm yep. Right, yes, I forgot about <laughs> All that. Alright. Okay. So, yes, right, I'm switching uh... out to the smoke bombs. Okie dokie. So, you can switch out to three smoke bombs. Um... Let's, uh, let's check out this. I'm going to... Because I assume I'm still hiding. I want to peek out this corridor and take Gander down, see what... If there's anything labeled. Uh, any yeah, labels or anything. Okie dokie. So, right, um, Sam Sabrick has looked down. Um, the the corridor is pretty much empty. Uh, <laughs> over to the airlock. The airlock, this one does not have any windows on it. Um, and it seems to be a reinforced door. Um, so it's a uh, sort of reinforced airlock door, and it does not respond when you try and open it. Mm. Okay. Mm. I want to close all right. up all the dro doors in the corridor we're currently in. Okie dokie. And I'll start cutting through the first door. I'm gonna back up just just in case something. So that's uh, <laughs> just... negative three quail rounds to go through that door? To go through the first door, yep. Okay. And it will cost you another three to cut through the second door in the, that airlock. Now uh, we'll see what the first door gives us first. Okay, so you cut through the first door in the airlock, and it, it gives you the five foot by five foot airlock box. Um, the only difference between this airlock and the other airlocks that you've met so far is, again, that the uh, second door also has no window. Also looks to be sort of mildly reinforced. Um, and that on the right-hand side, um, as you're going in, so the left-hand side as you're coming out, uh, there is a, a lock box on the wall um, that has a handprint scanner and um, appears to be sort of made of reinforced aluminium steel. What's your computer right. skill, Saravok? <clears throat> uh, let's see. I don't actually have computer skill. I have a high-ish intel high intelligence, though. Yes, it's, a, it's computer skill comes from intelligence. Yeah. So he would be able to use his intelligence bonus. Yeah. Well, I've got an intelligence of plus one, and then I got plus one to any skill I choose to use because of... I got a no, straight... I just can use I got a skill. <clears throat> yeah, I got a plus two to my computer. My intelligence. So you want to toss me that thing and I'll give it a roll, see what I can do? Nope, I really don't. <laughs> I'll give it... I'll give it back to you, I swear. I want to hold on to your, um... Your holdout rounds. Give me your holdout rounds while you while done you my computer. Deal. Okay. Deal. <laughs> the paranoia is beautiful between you two. You've both become these paranoid people. <laughs> oh yes, nope. you're okay. beautiful. Four freaking. So with the computer uh, access device, you managed to get an eight. What are you trying to do with the computer access device? I want to see Try if and, uh... open that door, bypass the hand. Yeah. <clears throat> That's exactly what I was thinking. Okay, so um, the lockbox on the side wall that has the handprint scanner on it. Um, you uh, basically crack open the handprint scanner and you connect the, the computer connect device to it. Um, and you attempt to access it. Uh, you fail. Uh, there's a little 
sound and uh, basically the connect the uh, opening of the lockbox the sort of seam where the lock lockbox is open turns red for a second and then essentially the lockbox welds itself shut okay i shoot it with one right, of the rounds um, from Saravall's no. pistol uh, no do not do that do not do, do that i give you one round and you such a dick turd <laughs> Bless the toad's character. Right, fine. So busy. Yeah. Okay. And I'm you, so you can have your rounds back. back. Give me my computer. Yeah. There you fun go. deal. <laughs> Dick bag. All right. I'm gonna. I, I want to wander back into Why, we can the still previous come area. Next door. I just gotta spend three more rounds of ammunition on it. I say just let me go take a hand. I mean, I've already cut him off. Let me just go pick it up. Oh, you're such a. Instead of his gross mutilation, I'm gonna start cutting through this other door. Okay, so it's already Sam cut off. <laughs> Savric Savric wanders back to try and get a hand, but um, by the time Savric by the time Savric comes back into the into the room, um, Toad's already cut his way through the second door and met himself into a corridor. Um, the corridor uh, has mounted on either wall um, a, a small slot. Um, and peering into the slot, you see that um, it basically has a um, kind of small automated pistol turret uh, covering the corridor. Neither of them seem particularly active or interested in you. Um, and at the end is the reinforced door, uh, similar to the ones you just cut through. <clears throat> I'm going to hold back until he steps further in. I'm not risking that shit. Invisible tripwires, things like that. Don't make me tie you like up and force you down this hallway. <laughs> I'll follow you. I'm just going to go slowly. You know what? Actually, okay. I'd rather... Whereabouts yeah. in this area are the turrets located? Okay, so we have one turret sitting here and one turret sitting in the wall here. You say they're in slits in the wall? They are embedded into the wall with uh, a, a small um, kind of like letterbox slot through which... Uh, they're obviously designed to discharge. So they would probably have discharge. an 80-degree field of view in that area that they're firing. Um, yeah, their field of view is is in probably uh, sort of starting here, probably cuts about 10 foot down the corridor to uh, to about here. Right there? Yeah, to about there. I what I feel is the range with my structural integrity knowledge. And... Screw it, let's cut through the wall. I don't want to deal with guns. Okay. I've, I've got a plasma uh, cutter and I disassembled stuff. Let's just say screw guns. Let me screw everything. L hold up. Let me let me get in here and actually uh. Or do you a quick... sneak your sneaky bastard ass down there. Yes, but let me do a let me do a quick spot check. I want to see if there's anything that my trained ass eyes can see when it comes to trip wires, lasers, anything. Okay, that's not bad. Um, you're reasonably experienced when it comes to security devices, especially the more fatal forms of security device. And uh, looking down the corridor, you can guess that these are probably either running off some kind of uh, thermal sensor, or if it's a, a very primitive system, then one of the segmented deck plates on the floor is simply a pressure, pressure switch. Um, it, it's one of the two. Um, you can get those are though because uh, laser tripwires and things are easily defeated uh, with simple uh, counter uh, counter kits. Uh, the two ones that are hardest to defeat are pressure plates because people rarely notice them, and thermal detection yeah. cameras. Uh, um, are we past hang... anywhere we can pick up a fire extinguisher? Uh, there's fire extinguishers parked in most of the corridors and several in the armory. Okay, I'm going to grab a fire extinguisher and start dosing myself with it. Okay, so I'm Toad is going these are for CO2 fire extinguishers. Um, there are a couple of CO2 fire extinguishers. There are also a couple of um, chemical foam fire extinguishers. Okay, I'm gonna dose myself with CO2. Okay, uh, all right. While and, he does that, oh, oh, because oh, oh. I'm going to no. take the chemical fire extinguisher as well and fire down the hallway as much as I can to cover the floor. Okay, so first off, um, Toad, can you roll a fortitude save for me? Oh, so I don't freeze my freaking balls off with the CO2? Yep, and Sabric, okay. what would you like to do? I would like to go back into your room, grab a body, and just throw it in there. I want to check the pressure plates. I want to, 
I want to see if that's a thing that I have to worry about. Okay, six plus eight. I'm gonna I'm gonna wander back and grab a body. Fourteen. Uh, you take two cold damage from uh, chilling yourself. Okay. So is that um, just non-lethal then separately, or off my main HP? That's off your main HP. That's not non-lethal. That's that's if you continue to do that too much, you would freeze yourself to the point of getting uh, frostbite and serious damage. Um, while you're busy coating yourself in CO2, Savrik wanders back trying to find something that he can use. Uh, he does find a body, which is Darren's, um, <laughs> sitting oh. in the armory. Um, however, he also, uh, <clears throat> looking around the armory, he also spots that like there's quite a few heavy backpacks, there's the other set of pneumatic arms, there's an awful lot of heavy things that he could use um, in place of a body. Of course, if he wanted to throw a body down the corridor, he could. <laughs> well, I'll take what I'm sure, because I don't want anything too light that won't trigger the actual charge, the actual plate, so I will grab the body to be 100% positive. You are such a... Now you're defiling <clears throat> corpses again. I wouldn't say I'm defying. I'm more using it to ensure my safety and yours as well. You got ungrateful so dick I, nuts. So I, I start about here and run and leap into the foam that I have spread across the floor, using it as a slip and slide as I mask my body. <laughs> okay, uh, roll me a dexterity it. check, please, Blaster Toad. Oh my god, please be one, please be one. Uh, please be one, holy shit. <laughs> Do I okay. on my face and still slide down the hallway? So basically your character kind of runs and jumps and slips and essentially ricochets himself down to about here and ends up lying on the floor between the two guns having ricocheted off the walls half a dozen times um, and taken um, <clears throat> eight non-lethal damage. <laughs> You just yeah. you just bruised your, bruised yourself to buggery by bouncing yourself and off the wall. I'm gonna like oh, foam great. crawl the rest of the way. <clears throat> so you foam crawl up to the door, um, uh, up to the uh, the entrance door that is just between the two guns. Um, so you haven't set the guns off. There you go. They're thermal, you dick bag. Who didn't have to defile a body? <laughs> well, <laughs> are there any extinguishers left? <laughs> In this area? No. Alright, that's fine. I'll... Can I just pick up the body and run through with it after he... After I wait for him to cut the door? You're gonna use Darren as a meat shield now? <laughs> yup. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I already got him. I'm not gonna waste time going back to get something I don't need. Oh, roll a ref roll a roll a reflex save for me, Savrik. Seven plus... Four, um, eleven. Okay, so you uh, hold up the body and you kind of walk through into the corridor. You you do quite well. The body receives multiple <coughs> bullet wounds um, as the uh, as the turrets focus on you and start uh, unloading grounds. The body receives multiple bullet wounds as you try and squeeze your way between the two turrets. However, one of them manages to wing your shoulder um, and do one damage. So it just just grazes your shoulder as you squeeze past. Um, if you hadn't done such a good reflex save, I probably would have let them hit you three or four times. But, but you you, you did okay. <laughs> right. You did you did a decent reflex save um, as you squeeze your way past with the defiled corpse of Darren, your colleague. <laughs> so I take it you're cutting your way through these doors as well, bastard. Such a dick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like, you're the poppy yes, story, I, 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 I didn't. I, I kind of let him get eaten by zombies, but you're reusing his corpse. Oh. You told him to go in first instead of letting yes, me hide and sneak in. in the room. You didn't let me hide and sneak and in, and as you should always let, let me do. Always let me sneak. Always let me sneak. Shit. So, <laughs> it's my um, job. <laughs> if you want to cut your way through the second set of security doors, you're going to have to expend another six rounds from your magnetic coil ripper. Is there a um, computer terminal out here? Uh, there are computer terminals connected to the doors, but again, they they reject your standard commands. You could try and break them open. Yeah, can we try the computer trick again here, or have they also yes. welded themselves? Uh, uh, it wasn't the doors that welded themselves shut. The, it was the, the uh, control box. panel. But yeah. Um, but yes, you can try the you can try the computer use trick if you want to break uh, break open the panel so and see if you can open it. Next one. Uh, it gives plus two for having the kit. 
Please don't be a dick one. Nice. Yes. Oh. So, um, you you crack open the panel on the wall and uh, you insert the connectors from the computer control kit. You actually get a, a sudden sort of flash of inspiration, and um, you you dig through the computing system and you find that. Um, the sort of sector is controlled by, by a lockout designed for use by command personnel for the station. Um, and you discover that uh, whatever happened, uh, some idiot has not uh, taken their um, ID bag out of one of the doors nearby. Uh, so using the computer connection, you actually basically um, piggyback off that badge and crack open the doors. Um, and you are now into a small room uh, with several seating positions so with now, control panels. So we've legitimately passed through the security and the doors, has that disabled the turret? Do they see us as friendly now, or would they still fire? You would have to try and check. Hey, Saravok, I shut down all the security here. Uh, I'm going to go through these doors looking for this ID badge I found. Can you check the ones we just passed through? Yeah, I'll, I'll hold the body up in front of me and walk to just between the turrets and hopefully not get, you know. The the turrets sit nice and, and quiet and calm. Um, if I was being cruel, I might make you roll a reflex save to see whether you fell over in the foam that's coating the floor. But... <laughs> you should have. No, because I'll do it. I'll do it. Frickin body. I'll do it. Oh. Okay, so you, you skid and slip a little bit, but you manage to drag the body back through between the turrets. The turrets don't pay much attention to you. Um, meanwhile, Blaster Toad checks the other two doors connected to what you presume is the command center from the way it looks. There's plenty of computer readout displays, uh, a couple of uh, desks and consoles. Um, but as far as you can tell from the other set of doors leading out, that um, the, the ID badge isn't there. It must be further down one of the corridors. Uh, Savrock goes back to the ones you've cut. If the computer, ID, if the security ID badge is in any of the doors you've cut open, um, it's lost behind twisted and half melted metal. Hmm. Well, so right. what I would like you both here and see what we uh, can see. I say yep, I haven't. I, I say I haven't gone through quite yet. Okay. I say I want. Right. I want. Plus Pull out my thermos plus and make plus sure there's no nothing in here. Okay, so Savrop um, checks the uh, thermos of detection, and he finds that, according to the thermos of detection, the atmosphere is a little bit thin, which you're expecting because you're feeling yep. this. Uh, the atmosphere was thin when you arrived, and since then you've jettisoned an awful lot of it out onto the moon's surface. Um, so you're already sort of noticing the atmosphere is thin. It also detects a chemical contaminant in the air, but it uh, unfortunately can't <clears throat> determine what the chemical contaminant is. It also detects a sound that is beyond human hearing range, which is what the sonic detector has been detecting each time you used it, which is a intermittent, um, high-pitched, out of human hearing range, um, kind of buzz sound that comes and goes randomly. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna head in there and I'll do a I'll do a spot check as well. What did you get last time? Got a ten, including got a 10. my modifier. Thirteen plus what is my modifier at? All right. Damn, twenty-two. Okay, so um. Blaster Toad goes around. Blaster Toad uh, has a quick check around. He finds uh, a few personal belongings left by command officers um, who obviously fled uh, quite early on um, because there's no signs of injury or harm, but they um, obviously didn't uh, take time to get gathering everything up. There's some personal effects. There's a couple of magazines. There's a, a novel sitting underneath one of the desks. Um, there's um, a half open uh, container of uh, nutrient rations. Um, across the screen, you find uh, different information being displayed. Um, having broken your way into the command center, you can now see that um, the radio transmission has been locked out, that even the command staff wouldn't have had access to it, which explains why the um, station's gone dark. And you also see that the power generation system, the oxygen generation system, and the um, door control system have all been placed on a kind of emergency setup so that the oxygen generation is no longer working. The um, door systems only work by direct command, um, but you've managed to rig a bypass into that system. And um, the 
brain melt, brain melt. Um, the other systems seem to be functioning reasonably normally, as far as you can tell when it comes to things like fire suppression and um, hydroponics and uh, computer control systems. And Savarik, um, you go around and you notice that on the floor uh, next to one of the control desks, there are some very, very faint scratches as if the control desk keeps getting moved. Okay. Um, I want to move the control desk. Okay. Um, the control desk is exceedingly heavy, but uh, Savrik wands over into the corner and, and Savrik starts tugging at the control desk over here. Um, and, any response to that, Toad? It's like as he just walks over to a desk and starts he, tugging at it? He's just like tugging on a desk. Well, I don't okay. know how heavy it is. Um, I didn't know how heavy it was. Uh, I'm going to walk head, over here just, and check it's... these doors as he's hey, tugging hey, hey, hey. the desk for that keycard. Okay, so you check these two doors. Neither of these two doors have the key card, but now that you've managed to find a way to bypass the security system, and now that you're inside the command center, the doors do actually respond and let you open them, um, leading to another corridor. Savage so manages to start moving. Yeah. Um, at the end of the corridor, uh, near the second set of doors, you see a large amount of blood, but uh, that's it. I'm going to close All these right. doors up for a moment. All right, now come over here and help me with the desk because it looks like it's been moved and there's most likely something behind it. Okay, and it's a lot heavier than I was expecting it to be. <laughs> okay, so together you manage to pull the desk over and behind the desk you find a wall panel that um, is obviously a fake wall panel. With the desk in place, you can it, it looks like all the other door panels, uh, wall panels, but with the desk moved out of the way, you can see that from probably about three foot off the ground downwards, it's a second panel rather than the sort of standard top to bottom floor panels um, and wall panels. And from the scratches underneath the desk, uh, you can tell that this panel's obviously been taken <clears> off <throat> repeatedly. Alright, um... Well, before we I... venture down that fun little fun little rabbit hole. Uh, I want to start looking through all these desks, see if there's anything useful inside, specifically looking for key cards. Uh, you go or through the desk. identification you... or, you know, like sticky notes with passwords on monitors. You, you, you start digging through the desks. Um, you find a, a couple of books. You find a, a couple of like notepads that have uh, huge amounts of writing on them. Um, you also find a um, data pad. And the data pad is locked um, out so that you can't read what's on it. Um, is it a pattern, a pin, or a password? Uh, it would be a password. Mm, if it was a pattern, I would have drawn a Z on it. Everybody makes their pattern passwords with Zs. <laughs> Seriously, I've had people bring in their phones like, I forgot how to like unlock this, and I drew a Z on their screen, and it unlocked. Everybody makes oh. a Z. <laughs> oh, wow. That, that's just despairable. Um, so um, I found notepads. I want to flip through the notepads looking for anything that might look like a password. Okay, so Blastoid's flipping through the notepad. What are you up to, as Oh, you I want to... Uh... For that? Oh, I just critically <clears throat> spot whatever... I want okay. to jam a pry bar into one end and try to pry open the wall panel, see if that's... I don't remember you picking up a pry bar. I did. Did you not? I said in the armor, I'm going to snag a pry bar as well when you were oh. going did, on about your coils of homo. He did last time. He did say he was grabbing a pry bar. Yeah. Um, so you, you whack a pry bar into the wall and you lever it and the, the wall pops off quite easily and hinges out on a pair of hinges. Uh, and it, that's, that's what leads to the scraping shapes underneath the door. It pops out. It leads to a, a three foot by three foot by... Um, probably about 20 foot corridor, um, a bit like a Jeffrey's tube, a bit like a, a maintenance channel. Um, and there's a bright light coming in the end of the other end of the corridor. Uh, All right, I'm going to, I'm going to roll to hide. Okay. okay. And did I find anything on that notepad or was it just useless garbage? As you went through the notepad, you found all sorts of things to do with the maintenance and, and, and running of the station. Um, you also found three things that, that are possibly of, of significant importance. Um, one of them is the word Gemini, uh, which is written down by itself without any obvious kind of um, inference or, or any obvious link to anything. Um, the, the second thing you find um, is a question mark um, followed by the words um, Chiri Chira, 
C H I R I C H I R A. R I C H I R A. Um, followed by another question mark and followed by purpose, reason unknown. Okay. And the third thing the third thing you find is um, birthday, followed by a date, followed by remember communication. Yo, one sec, I'm getting the phone call quickly. I don't know where it's from, but uh, I'm going to bounce into the other room quickly. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, the data pad I found, I want to try to enter Gemini's password. Okay. Uh, so you pick up the data pad and you uh, tap in Gemini the password. And um, it gives you access to the uh, data pad's basic inf information. Um, and the basic information on the data pad, it, it's obviously one of the command officer's uh, data pads. And it contains a lot of bits and pieces, personal photographs. Um, he, he was a, a family man. He had two daughters. Um, and uh, the one of the data births matches up with the date of birth. Yes, they were. They were delightful. Awesome. Um, they they one of the dates of birth uh, matches up with the uh, date of birth you've got with the uh, remember to communicate um, uh, on the notepad. Yeah. Uh, you also find a, a series of um, personal files, uh, written text files, on the data pad, and they they are as you read through them, um, they they are obviously a kind of diary. The, they obviously have a, a chronological order in which they were written. Um, and it starts off with um, a basic explanation uh, written by him that um, he's unsure as to what's going on. He was hired as a uh, command uh, maintenance and operations officer. Um, basically, it was his job to make sure the station continued to operate. And as you go through the entries, you notice that um, He's starting to query where the power is going from, why so many supplies are being delivered. And every time he queries this, uh, Obs of Life, the, the company that hired him, um, basically returns with, well, that's not your job. Your job is to make sure the station continues to run. So he's a puppet commander. Uh, he's a puppet commander. Okay. Um, and he has suspicions as to why so many things are being delivered. There are so many resource and... Um, cargo vessels dropping things off and also where this stuff is going it's being taken out onto the surface of the moon and disappearing off he, he's suspicious whether or not they're building a military installation or something somewhere else on the moon um oh, there's another installation buggy time it's buggy as far time. as he's aware buggy time buggy 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 time okay okay toad's character has completely lost his mind and so has toad <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad yet I don't think, anyway. But you're never really aware of it yourself, are you? Mm, it's true. <laughs> so, so what you found out from, from everything combined is that the commander was a puppet commander. Um, an awful lot of stuff was being delivered to the station. Um, from the, plat from the, uh, the notepad, you find out that there is uh, something called Chirichira, Chirichira and it, it has an unknown purpose. Um, and as far as you can tell, this guy basically was was freaking out about this job long before anything happened. The, in the personal logs and personal information, he, he's um, got things about um, asking his wife if they have enough savings to uh, basically for him to quit the job. Um, and this is this is long range station management. So this this is like That's from here it would take a couple of weeks. Job and you know, like, yeah. lots of time to leave. I'm back. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, the commander uh, guy was a puppet commander. He is freaking out okay. about his job, and he thinks things are going astray because resources were showing up and then disappearing, be taken out okay. under the surface. Okay. Secret. Secret bullshit. All right. I'm now that I'm, I'm hiring. I'm gonna I'm gonna come in here. I want to see what I can find. Wait. And I want to turn on my thermos of, of my chemical detection thermos. Right, so the contamination in this room is far higher than in the command room. Again, it has no idea what the contamination is. Um, you sneak along to the end, and you see two corpses sitting on the ground. And at the end is a, um, a, a basically a large uh, creature that you can't identify, a large thing. It is an amorphous blob, basically. I do not want the YouTube link. <clears throat> I want the 
Okay. Copy. Um, this this little corridor would not be airtight, eh? Uh, no, it would not. What? No, not the bloody YouTube link. Go back. <laughs> Cancel. Copy. Why will it not let me copy this? It's it's uh, not letting me. Are these doors right behind yeah, me? Do they have windows in them? Um, yeah, I'm gonna back out nope. and head back in here. No, those are also Again, the security are... doors. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna quickly jaunt over here and close these doors. Um. Okay. And so then I'm gonna um... quickly jaunt over here and open these doors. And you're outside your little tunnel. Yeah, I just hang out. I just want to see what. So, okay, so uh, see. Th th this is basically what you see. You've come. This is basically from oh, we found where this you room. would be we seeing. We saw this on the. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, on the left-hand side of this picture, this is where the uh, room would curve around the corner, and you can't see because uh, this is around the corner from where you've come into the room. You've yeah. got a couple of desks along the side. That door isn't actually there. Um, that door is invisible. Or that door isn't there um, in the actual thing. It was just the closest image I could find. And at the end, you have this big yeah. um, glass wall, and behind the glass wall is this amorphous um, lump. <laughs> this 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 large organic mass um, looks a little bit like a, a giant ball of yeast. Um, um, okay. <laughs> made in, in kind of like dark greens, blues, a couple of. Um, sort of pinky fleshy colors. It seems to be like an amorphous mass uh, sitting at the end here. Yeah, you just backed out of there. What the hell did you see? Um, I'm, I'm a, I saw two more zombies that aren't moving and some what the shit. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It was just it was terrifying. Campaign? and Yeah, it's behind the glass wall of... Uh, I don't know if it's sturdy glass, if it's anything special, but I didn't see anything else around the corner. Just... Was it? What was it? Uh, hang on. Let's uh, throw a grenade. We'll run through this kay. wall, and we'll let the CO two take care of it. If that's what it is. Okay. So yeah, you, yeah. you you yeah. want to, you want to throw one of your um basically your fake fires? Do you blast it? I want him to try to break that glass, and then I want to throw a fake fire and run out this freaking door. Okay. I uh, I will. I'll pop back through, and I will. Hmm. Let's see, what do I have? Or do you got a rifle that you can fire at that? Did you pick up, like, the super I... space rifle? No, and we don't know if it's... I from it anyway, so never mind. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, we don't know awesome. if this is explosive in here, so I, um... Throw I'll it, just... and we'll run out this door. I'm gonna wiggle a grenade at the back glass wall and just book okay. it through the I throw the a firebar bomb at this corner, and I jump. Okay, so can you both do a um, attack roll for me? Yep. Oh, what the shit did I just do? Oh my god. Give me a PvP attack roll. I... 13 plus what base attack stat? Oh, son of a bitch. Uh, yeah, plus your, um, plus your uh, ranged attack. Uh, missile? Yeah. Uh, plus 9. Okay. So, blast toad. Uh, where did you aim your? Just into this room. Okay, so like... blast toad's bomb lands approximately here, and um, I, unfortunately, with my, I got nine okay. with my bonus thing. My missile as well. So eleven um... and five. Okay, so where were you aiming your missile? I was aiming it right here. Okay, so 11 that, is general. this way. One, two, three, four, five. How do so, you throw it around a freaking corner? It, it bounced off things. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, right. um, you um, ignite one of your um, little powder charges, um, and, and you wing <clears> it around. <throat> it, it, it ricochets off things randomly. Okay, how um, long is this guy taking to get to these doors? Uh, six seconds, roughly. Okay, I'll wait to close the doors then. Yeah. Um, so, uh, is Savrick going to run for it? Yeah, I'm going to book it as fast as possible. Okay, I use my remote control on those doors. Okay, so you shut yourselves in this um, corridor. You hear a, a dull thump um, from somewhere else, and um, the lights in the corridor go red. Um, 
and and you hear a, 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 a klaxon for about four and a half seconds at which point the klaxon kind of flutters out and dies um and and as far as you can tell the plan has gone to uh gone to um plan as, as far as you can tell it's like with the doors closed you're shutting yeah. this little corridor let's wait five minutes yeah because i want that co2 um, to take effect all right i want those suckers okay. to suffocate okie dokie so you wait five minutes oh, okay um and then uh, what do you do once the five minutes have elapsed i'm gonna open these doors again Okay. Uh, so... Wait, no, I'm going to close my helmet temporarily and then open these doors again. Uh, yeah, I'll follow suit. Okay. Um, you both close your helmets, um, which starts eating into your limited supply of oxygen that you've got in your um, survival suit or your rescue suit. And you open the doors and you head in. Uh, Blaster Toad's backpack of flaming delight um, is sitting on the floor. Um, it has gone out, and the entire room, floor to ceiling, is uh, filled with kind of, it looks a bit like someone's set off um, a smoke bomb, but set off a smoke bomb that's colored a kind of lurid red, um, a, a very bright red color. Um, and Yep. <laughs> uh, you've got quite limited visibility now, um, but the the red stuff uh, appears to be a kind of powder it's it's coating the top of the desks it's it's covering the screens it's in and some on some jackhole things. used a particle fire retardant in a space station all right that Since destroys you... all sorts of electronics what engineer think was dumb the... enough to do that i think that's the point actually uh, that's that's kind of the point if something goes wrong and some shit happens, they're going to want to destroy all the documents in case investigation of something, or I'm just paranoid Not as balls. Not in, like, a legally <laughs> operating space station. You want to be able to recover your crap, or, like, you know, it's, have your guys go into the room after you still use stuff? legally operating. Can you roll a spot for me, guys? Yeah. A spot check. Oh, oh my god. Is one of them going to crawl down the damn corridor at us? And I would actually like to have use my cybernetic vision Oh my god. Okay. Yay, I got a... <laughs> we both I got a three! Right. I got okay. 12 So total. apparently my dice are RPing about the red smoke, because I can't see yep. shit. So Savrit, Savrit notices that the uh, console that you've moved out the way, that uh, Blastoid's standing right next to and still hasn't noticed, um, has a message on the screen that is partially obscured by the red powder. Um, it, it's it's a bright lit message, as if the me this message this message wasn't there when you moved the, the desk originally. Um, as you go over and you kind of brush the powder off the screen, um, the it's it's basically a readout stating that the fire emergency system was activated, and that the uh, fire purge system was activated, and requesting whether or not the uh, fire is completely out uh, with a simple yes no input. Uh, can you use your chemical analysis? Thingamajig to see if it's safe to breathe this air. Yes, I will. That's, yeah. Is it, is it okay. safe or are we screwed? Uh, so you take out the chemical analysis thing and it, it shows that the uh, chemical in the air is a um, kind of uh, copper carbon mix. The It's a copper carbon powder. It's uh, technically a uh, biological carbon mixed with a biological copper. And the reason it's red is essentially, it, it's, it's a form of hemoglobin, essentially. Um, it would hurt if you breathed it, but it wouldn't necessarily be directly toxic. So it's not going to deoxygenate um, us. It's not like an oxygen sucking thing. No. Then why is it using as a fire retardant? Uh, like maybe it just coats you, stuff and it's a powder and it and it smothers it. It doesn't actually starve the fire of oxygen. Maybe if you had a, uh, a closer examination of where the fire was coming from, you might learn a little bit more. I'm going to go look at my smoke bomb. I'm okay, going to follow so... him because I have the chemical skill expertise. So all over the bone. backpack is, is this red powder, but it's no longer red. It's, it's turned to a deep brown, and each of the pieces of powder has um, expanded and stuck to itself, and the backpack is essentially encased in um, a semi-solid... Um, ball of this uh, coagulated and, and expanded powder that's turned into almost like a ceiling foam. Um, 
your structural engineering knowledge makes you guess that if the fire had damaged something that allowed air to leak out of the station, such as damaging, uh, uh, cracking one of the walls or damaging one of the glass windows, this stuff would probably stick and seal temporarily. Um, oh, okay. And it, it, it's probably a combination fire retardant and um, atmospheric defense designed to keep the station airtight. Um, the computer, meanwhile, is still asking you whether or not uh, the situation has returned to normal. Um, again, with a yes, no input. Um, hmm. Has the situation returned to normal? Or We've got do you freaking think... space zombies. What the hell is normal? <laughs> okay, I'm so it's just tell it enough. the fires out, hoping that it uh, evacuates the particulate from the air. So there's a sudden thunk when you tell it the fire is out, and all of the vents in the room uh, flick open. Um, and then, although some of the powder remains sitting on surfaces, um, there is a very, very strong uh, suction effect. Um, and um, a lot of the, the powder is ripped up off the surfaces. It gets uh, swirled up into the air, little, little tornadoes form around the vents. Um, a lot of the stuff remains behind, but everything is a lot clearer now. The air is um, free of powder. Okay, I wear um, my helmet. I don't want to okay, waste okay. more oxygen than needed. Yeah, yeah. So. So the atmosphere tastes a little bit like um, sucking on a copper penny, but um, otherwise things seem perfectly fine. Okay, I'm gonna roll to hide again. Okay, roll away. Okay. And I don my double cutters of doom. Okay, so um, you've got the double arms uh, basically strapped to your back. You pull them forwards and um, you have your two cutters. Um, and from from a mechanic standpoint, basically from a single direction, they will give you a percentage chance of things attacking you in melee to miss and injure themselves instead. Okay. Let's start so, slowly, yeah. slowly, slowly peering around this corner. How well am I hidden? Uh, terribly. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I got a, what, 12? Yep. Yeah, okay. Considering you're in a well-lit room, and you're crawling yeah. through a single tube corridor, your hiding is not okay. distracting. Okay. So you come out into the room. Um, the room obviously also had the effect of the red powder, um, but it's again also been evacuated to a certain extent. There is red powder on a lot of the surfaces, but it's not ridiculously heavy. Uh, the glass in the corner with the, the creature behind it is completely intact, um, whereas over around the corner where you couldn't see before, there are some more computer desks and some tables set up with lab equipment, um, like uh, scanners, molecular detectors, um, and um, uh, laser element uh, readers and things like that. And um, about three of them in the corner are uh, ripped to hell by little pieces of lead going through them. Um, okay. Bits of things are shattered, uh, but the glass in the corner with the lump behind it is still intact. Any damage to it at all, or is it just absolutely uh, fine? It, it, it's, it's got a few um, pits pits in the side where the grenades bounce some lead off it, but um, there's no ribboning cracks or anything. It's more like what you'd expect okay. if you got a rock on a wind, wind mirror. Okay, so it's seemingly bulletproof, or rather no, shatterproof. No, just sucks. <laughs> you threw a grenade around a corner. Okay, okay, that's quite um, impressive. <laughs> that is, yeah, let's be honest now. It means it bounced from here to here and then over there somehow. Come on, that's skill. But um, I'm going to wander over and we don't know if these things are dead yet because we don't. There was clearly no explosion that enveloped the room. Let's, uh, I don't know. Let's tie one of the. Tie this guy's arms together so you I can't do anything. You want to get close enough to tie back. that thing up? You go for it. I'm gonna check at this desk. Initiative, I'm gonna, yeah. <laughs> Initiative rolls. Ten. Ten plus two. Plus yeah. Plus initiative is. Still two. having a hard time looking through all these things. It's right two. below yes. armor class. Yeah. yeah. The twelve. Okie dokie, so we've got Blast Toad on 12, we've got um, 50 on, what did you score? 12 as well. 10, 12. I rolled a 10, so I got 12 as well. Okay, so as you move into the room, uh, you, you head towards one of the zombies uh, with the intent of tying it up, or one of the corpses. Um, and um, as you approach, uh, it, it's a young woman wearing um, 
a, a, a lab coat and um, disposable trousers and disposable shoes. Um, she, she's wearing a, a, a vapor filter mask, uh, which links to a filter on her hip. Um, and as you approach to her, um, she kind of shifts slightly. So she's obviously a zombie. Uh, in the meanwhile, um, as you approach close to that one and she starts shifting, uh, this one starts to reach up and start to claw its way up the chair uh, towards a standing position. And uh, it is, um, you both rolled 10, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go clockwise. So it'll be Savage's turn first as he's the one sitting next to the zombie. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to roll to stab it in the hand and blow its arm off at the elbow with the shotgun. Okay. I, will, I will equip the shotgun and blow its arm off at the elbow. I'll do that. Okay. Six. Plus eight. Plus eight. Um, and it is... Okay, so um, Savrak is exceedingly fast. He sort of flicks his hands and, and snaps his hands around and, and rips a shotgun out of his belt um, and, and flicks his cybernetic knife into his other, other hand. Um, and he, he spins around and um, blows the screen out on the computer behind the uh, zombie that he's looking at. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Shit. All right. Code? <laughs> yeah. Damn. Is it worth it? <laughs> is it worth what? He's such, such a dick. Well, there's some blobbish thing in the background. I'm kind of curious, but also freaking space zombies. I'm I'm too curious. I want to know. Well, okay, you two have my, managed to take um, that before. Structural, structural knowledge of the hardening substance on the backpack. Mm -hmm. Can I determine whether or not it would res restrain a zombie? Um, if it managed to fully harden, probably yes. As it's designed to temporarily seal oxygen leaks. Do I waste another bomb throwing it at a zombie? Bearing in mind that it only seemed to coagulate around the backpack, not anything around around the backpack. Yeah, like I'd have to hit it dead on. Yep. Mm, my rolls haven't been that good. No. Please don't. Let's just just uh take a take a shot with your something. Aim for an arm or something. Oh, do you know what I'm really tempted to do? What's that? Run out of the frickin' wall, the room, and then bust a hole in the outside wall here with my ripper. <coughs> Just space the bastards. You want to basically force, <laughs> force decompress the, the environment. That's what I'm tempted to do, so. but I know it's a bad idea, but it's just like, screw this. It's I'm out. a terrible idea. But space zombies. It's a terrible idea. Okay, so he just... His aim sucks. I don't want to get that close to him either. <laughs> um... <laughs> okay, I... Wielding my double chainsaw arms of death. I got like circular okay. saw blades on this mecha upper torso thing. Yep. I'll do a charging attack at the zombie and see what I can cut off of it. Okay. So that With is an a... 11, and then what do I add to that? Uh, you add your um, handheld, uh, which would be plus 11, plus 2 for charging. So you manage to get up to... Um, 24, which is perfectly enough to hit. And because you're wielding uh, two circular swords on pneumatic arms, um, you get to roll um, uh, 48. Oh, no, 46, sorry. 46. Holy shit. <laughs> the first saw does. Holy crap. Oh, my, my goodness. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, what I'm does the next one do for me? Uh, 
I'll do them one at a time here. The next one does four. Four damage. Jeez. Okay. So, so between the two saws, um, you basically run forwards and you jam these two saws in the slum. Uh, do you want to uh, declare what you're attacking, or do you want to go with the percentiles? No, because after you told me that we've got a percent to yeah. like, just kill the thing in one hit, I'm going to take your percent. Okay, so you get a 45, which means uh, you run forwards, you jam forwards, and you uh, sever the thing's right leg, and uh, it collapses onto its front on the floor. Um, and as it collapses onto its front on the floor, again, dead silence. All you hear is the thud as it as it hits the ground. These things are making, again, no noise as they as they move around. Um, uh, the one over in the corner, um, or the one that's sort of further away from you, um, is going to move towards Savrick. But uh, while it moves forwards, it, it it sort of swings its arm and completely misses Savrick. Um, and I'm the like one here now, aren't I? Yep. And um, the one on the ground. Um... Uh, swings at Savrick again, and again misses, um, because uh, both of these these zombies seem to be incapable of uh, breaking your your defense at the moment. Um, so it's back round to Savrick. All right. Um... Can I place a battery bomb and run the hell out of the general vicinity of Chunk's line? Uh, battery bombs are going to be quite effective at very short range, but they're not going to have a particularly long range. You could um, basically um, use the little rig up that uh, Blast Toad managed to make with Craft Electrical that will give you a couple of seconds, and uh, you can drop a uh, battery bomb where you're standing and peg for it. Okay. However, All right, um... uh, can, can I give you a um, kind of like link into the rules now? Um, there are things called prepared actions. Um, as a prepared action, you can declare that you're going to do something at a certain point and then stop acting, at which point you wait for that trigger to happen. Now, if you drop this bomb and run away, this bomb is going to go off before Blastertone has his turn and it's going to yeah, damage Blastertone. If you declare, yeah. And, and basically, you, you use a free action to tell Blaster Toad you're going to drop a bomb. You can then wait until Blaster Toad's turn comes around, and you can both run together. That's what I was just about to say. I'll, I'll let him know that I'm going to do said bomb planting and to just book it for the other room. That's... Okay. So, uh, Blaster, what do you do? So it comes around to your turn. Savrick's letting you know, and he's pulled a a, a battery bomb out. Um, what what are you uh, what are you about to do? Uh, how many do you, squares can I do in a double turn run? Uh, in a double turn run, you can do twelve squares, or you can do twenty four if it's an easy. Uh, you will have to make a reflex save to essentially jump through the um, jump through the the, the three foot no, by three foot tunnel. I can do tunnel. like twelve squares. I'm going to run over this corner where he's already blown everything to shit. Okay, and I will follow. Okay, so you've only got one move left because you're dealing with the bomb, so you get to move six yeah, squares. So I will. Yeah. And um, do me a um, reflex check. One. Oh! So uh, Blaster Toads doesn't matter because he's far enough away okay. um, I got from any 14. risk. 14. You manage okay. to duck yourself down behind this desk, so so you're not at much risk either. Um, and you, you drop a battery bomb, uh, a battery acid bomb, um, and um, each zombie takes uh, 2d8 damage. So the, fir the first zombie takes um, 1d8 of physical damage and 1d8 of acid, and takes 4 damage. Oh, and the second one takes... Eight damage. Okay, so um, what what you find out is that the first zombie that uh, took took damage um, took not enough damage to actually break any limbs. The second zombie takes a chunk of battery <clears> through <throat> its left shoulder. Okay. So, so which um, one has the left shoulder down? The the standing one or the, the one I took the leg off of? Um, I'm going to be nice and I'm going to say the standing one has lost its left hand and the one on the floor has lost its right leg. Fantastic. And that means we All still right. have to deal with both of them. Eh. That'll be fine. 
So it comes around to their turn. The um, one on the ground um, is basically trying to claw its way back to its feet. Um, it manages to get up onto three limbs and it manages to move slowly. Uh, the one that's standing, being standing, is a little bit quicker um, and it manages to move around. It's swinging at Savrik over the desk um, because that's as far as it can move and then attack as well. So um, where's my d20? There's my d20. And it hits Savrik, unfortunately. All right. And it deals eight damage total. Eight damage? Ouch. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Six plus two for its um, rather strong strength, uh, bringing Savrik down to seven hit points. Savrik is All in right. trouble. Yes. Um, I'm going to run, just book it back into this corner area as far as okay. I can move into one. And um, can I treat injury on myself this turn? Uh, yes, you can. Standard action yeah. to treat injury on yourself. Yeah. So roll a 20 and... 18 okay. plus 14. Um, you managed to heal uh, 1d4 plus 2, which is 1d4 plus your um, medic check. Yep. Oh my three. god. <laughs> you managed to heal yourself a full three hit points. That's Blast fine. code, Shit. it is your turn. Mm -hmm. So it is. Just looking through everything, seeing what I can that I don't have to get too damn close. Did you grab an assault rifle or no? No. No, okay. My guy's used to dealing with like disassembly and stuff like that so he's like saws i know how to use saws guns it's like whatever guns but they don't know how to use those um would well, really be useful right now <laughs> you want to take one of mine take my shotgun okay, he has a holdout pistol himself yeah I do. yeah there you go okay how far can i go with a charging attack um, you need to really do a charge and attack in a straight line, and because you've got desks between you and the creature, you're going to have okay. trouble doing a charge. You could walk around the edge of the desk and um, get within range with your... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, or you could just about get within range with your pneumatic arms leaning over the desk. You could just about get within range. And this other thing's contained over here. Uh, was there a computer terminal on the thingamajigger in the corner? There was indeed. There was a computer terminal on the thing in the corner. I want to run over and look at the computer terminal, see what I can see. So spot check on that. Um. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, you can spot check on the computer terminal. Oh, you! <laughs> <laughs> I got a Dude, four. In real life, it's so great with computers. Uh, Yep, your, your guys just wonderful with computers. You run over <laughs> and um, the computer terminal has just some basic data on it. Um, you, your eyes kind of flicker through and you're, you're having trouble focusing because you're panicking slightly and you're breathing heavily and, and your eyes fo don't focus properly. Um, basically, the, the what you pull out is you pull out the words containment and um, yeah, you also pull out the words um, uh, cryo uh, from, from the... Um, uh, uh, display, but uh, you don't manage to see any detail of what's going on on the display at the time. Oh, so what's in there might be really cold. You have now uh, used your turn, so it's um, yes. the zombie's turn again. Oh. Uh, so this one goes first, and again it, it, it kind of crawls and scuttles its way around this way. And this one again walks its way to here. So um, it is now Savrick's turn. Um... Hmm. I will Let's see what I want to uh, do here. But by the way, although it is a risk throwing the bomb because, like, if you miss, it can scatter. Um, yeah. And go somewhere else. Uh, the the power bomb, if you manage to actually land it on the square of the creature, uh, it's going to do three d ten damage. Yeah, it's, I will. Going to do a lot of damage. Yeah, I got enough. But I'm going to do it. What's the worst that happens? <laughs> it lands oh, okay. right on top of me this one. because you throw around corners. Or so, how would I get a 25? 25. 25. Okie dokie. So you get a 25, which means that 
we roll one second. We roll these to see which direction it scatters. Actually, wait, 25 at this range. No, it wouldn't actually scatter. So you actually land it on the zombie if you're, if you're throwing it in the close one. Um, yeah. In which case, uh, 3d10 damage to the zombie and a reflex save from both of you, please. Yeah, I will reflex save first. Oh, son of a bitch. Yes, finally. Oh, son of a bitch. You got okay, a one, I got is, a 20. <laughs> where is my D10? Oh, there uh, it is. Yep, okay, so you can roll yeah, I got a 3 25. D10. Oh, oh what? Oh, shit. Got to try this again. Let's actually roll the damn thing. So a nine? That's not a D10 with the shit. No, that's oh. a D12. Oh, God. Oh. Damn it. One second, let me create you 3d10. Oh, oh, look at that. Beauty. Three, eight, two. Thirteen. 13. So, you whack 13 damage into this thing, and um, it's not best happy. Uh, it still <clears throat> makes no sound, but uh, it's not best happy. <laughs> and... Okay, what do I do to so... myself, though? Okay, so you managed to blow two limbs off this thing. Um, so you managed to blow two two limbs off this thing with the grenade. Um, so it's actually okay. down to um, uh, one functioning arm. Um, so so that particular zombie is down to one functioning arm, and it, it's it's flopped on the ground. It's got chunks blown out of it. It's got shrapnel in it. Um, at that okay. range, those bombs, because the, the bombs have very low range, that one does a 1d4 to your character, which is one damage. OK, good. I so that. You, you take a little bit of <clears throat> shrapnel from that range, because remember, that's like um, yeah almost 25 foot away from you. Uh, meanwhile, yeah. Masato yeah. just steps himself around the corner of the, the reinforced tank and just kind of smiles at you as, as shrapnel wings around you. Um, oh, not and so it is, sneaky bastard now. And it is Blastoad's turn. Okay. So I picked up the word cryo in this thing, eh? Yep. Can I attack I, and then move? Or do I have to yes, move you and can. attack? Yes, you can. Okay. Nope, you can attack and move. You can do it either way around. I want to plunge both my saws into the containment glass and then jump the Son of a bitch. Okay, so... So the um, two... or 4d6? My two saws? Yep, 4d6. It's a stationary object, so... Um, 14. 14. So, um... You, you, you uh, basically just kind jump. of... Yeah, because I'm an idiot. Um, uh, basically, you, you plunge the two swords into the glass, and a lot like um, circular swords going through plastic, they go... And, and, and you cut two neat little slices in the, um, in the reinforced glass. Um, little bits of glass skittering all over the place. Um, having cut two neat slices and kind of flicked the swords, you manage to cut um, two vertical slashes in the glass. Um, and and um, the glass is most certainly open now. Um, there's a kind of a crack and, and, and hiss sound, and um, the area around where you've cut the glass um, suddenly fills with small particles of moisture um, and small particles of snow. Um, but the glass doesn't shatter. Oh, it's not like a flash freeze? Nope. Just like, oh, it's slightly cold there now. Well, <laughs> th that area is now filled with snow, but, but the glass doesn't seem to have been bothered by the, the But I was the hoping snow. to, like, slow down the frickin' zombies by, like, filling this area with CO2 yeah, or like, well, nitrogen oh. or something. <laughs> you didn't think it through. Well, I we didn't think it through. I is. ran away. We don't know. And... We don't know what this blob is. Is maybe it's being cold it's for our safety. It's cold. Now it's just... That's what the blob is. It's cold. So in the meantime, <laughs> this zombie crawls along the floor and, and is headed towards you. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run up this way. Actually, no, shit, no, I ain't gonna run nowhere. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let him deal with that zombie up there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll to heal myself first. Okay. Okay, you can do 1d4 without the plus 2 because you've already healed yourself once. Yeah. 3. 
Okay, I can deal with that. I'll keep me alive for a bit. Okay, uh, so it's Blast Toad's turn. <laughs> Are you I basically both going to hide in the corner? And um, observe his wounds. Actually, I'm just going to be here. <laughs> just, like, look at him like a dumbass. Like, you threw a bomb in here. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I'm alive still. Barely. Okay. I'm just waiting for that thing to come to us so we can attack yeah. together. This guy may be okay. a douche, yeah. but I need the douche. So this thing crawls <laughs> around, and um, it, it, it's Savage's turn again. All right. Um, I'm going to this within range to charge him. and or Actually, I'll, I'll move up here, and then I'll try to shoot his other so... leg off. Not not to well, take um, not to take kind of impetus off you guys, but can can I suggest something as a, a third party? Mm -hmm. um, yes. And in fact, I'm gonna I'm going to predicate this on rolling an intelligence check. Um, can I get an intelligence check from you guys? Let Let's see if your characters are smart enough to figure something out. I got a four. I got a sixteen. Plus okay. Two. Um, so Savrik um, is, is most certainly smart enough to figure this out. This zombie is basically just headed for you by the most um, sort of easy route it can find. Um, it, it's headed for you at a pretty constant speed. It's crawling along the floor. It's not ridiculously fast. Um, you've got a guy with two pneumatic arms with circular saws on them and someone with a shotgun. If you were to set up a trap and basically <laughs> stand and wait for it... Um, Why do you think I came to this corner? With the two circular saws at the front and the shotgun just behind ready to fire when it came within range you could probably do some serious injury to it as it came close yeah i just, I just don't like being trapped in that corner i want to get out as soon as possible in case this thing i don't know okay, I just want okay. If, you, if you want to try and work your way around past that thing that's fine yeah okay yeah. so Savrick moves forward. What do you do, Savrick, once you move forwards? I'm going to try to shoot off one of its... I'm just going to shoot it and go for whatever happens, happens. Okay. I, I like that way of doing things. 17. Ooh. Okay. Nice. Finally. Plus 7. The shotgun is... Uh, 3d6. That seems like okay. really dark in this... Oh, I forgot to turn on my second okay. light. Oh, There's two. Four and four, so, that's good. Uh, oops. Yes. Okay. Oh my god. Select one. Holy shit game. Oh my god. I absolutely hate my life. <laughs> there you go. Okay. And five. So so you managed to get a, a grand total of 13 damage. So although you're quite a long distance away, you've got a reasonable good accuracy, accuracy with the shotgun. And despite what people think, shotguns don't spread out like a cone. Um, they, they, they produce a, a, a scattering of pellets roughly the size of a fist that can travel actually a surprisingly long distance and still be effective. Um, and it, it pumps into the, um, the zombie. And um, uh, let's see, it blows the zombies. Uh, right hand off. You Having already lost hands. left hand. So it is now a handless zombie with two legs. <laughs> um, okay. You know, I thought this was the one that was missing a, that I took the leg off. Yeah, that was when oh, you took the yes. leg off. Yes, yes. sorry. Yeah. Um, so it, it has it's a bum shoulder, missing a leg, and missing a... Or no, this one had the so, good shoulder, so it's just missing yep. a leg and a yeah. hand now. Leg and a hand, yep. So it's got one leg and a hand left. Um, and it is Blastoad's turn. I ready my saws. Okay, so I guess why basically I what you do here because he's a dumbass. So basically, <laughs> what you do is is you crouch down, you bring the two pneumatic saws in front of you, you turn them on, and you basically basically you sort of crouch down behind the pneumatic saws. Um, you because the pneumatic saws are designed to be kind of held in place by the pneumatic arms because the saws are designed to be held in place by the arms. You can actually let go of them now; they're set in place and set going. Ooh, so can you can I actually also use your... wield my coil ripper. You can also wield your coil ripper from between the two magnetic arms. Two <laughs> uh, saw arms. Zombie. <laughs> All right. I just Damn. went so... full turret mode. <laughs> yeah, you've just gone full turret mode. You, you've crouched down, you've got circular saws in front of you, and you've got your magnetic ripple resting on your lap. Um, 
ready to ready to unleash hell when the zombie gets too close. Um, it's the zombie's turn, and slow down as it is, the zombie creeps uh, creeps forward. Um, and because of where Savrik is standing, the zombie manages to get close enough to take a swipe with its good arm. It kind of like it's kind of pulling itself forward in silence as it gets close enough. It kind of flops on its front and swings its arm at Savrik uh, from the floor. Um, it misses. Um, um, and basically, as it lifts its arm off the floor to swing at Savrik, it kind of flops onto its side and, and, and fails miserably to actually get hold of Savrik. Um, so it's okay. Savrik's turn. All right. Um, I will roll to. So I'll pull up my uh, arm blade and attack it. Okay. You're still gonna. St you're gonna come behind. Okay. So you can. You can, oh. you can attack, then move. Remember. Yeah, I'll you can do, do a single attack and move. Yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna attack him. What do I hit? Uh, you did hit. Yep. Yep. And um, your uh, what's your damage with that weapon? Two d four. So you roll your two d four and you add your strength because it's a melee weapon. Um, yep. Four and three, yep. so seven. And strength is. Plus three. Okay, so you, you managed to break its its threshold. Um, come here, percentile dice combination. You and you. Okay, so that's the same roll as it got last time, so it skips over onto the next one. So you managed to um, you managed to basically dig into its its left hand or um, its its left um, hand, and you managed to sort of cut its left hand to pieces. It's it's now got functionally no hand on that side, so it, it's kind of flopped on its chest, kicking its back leg. Um, it's it's got a functional leg, so you now have got one with a functional hand and one with a functional leg, but they're not sort of <laughs> Can't it functional still, like, zombies. Uh, it's it, only it, its it, hands it, come uh, off. It, it can crawl, but once it gets to you, the most it can do is kind of roll around and try and whap you with its leg. Um, it's if like you were to dead walk fish up to it, with... you. yeah. If you were to walk yeah. up with up to it with a saw or a knife, you'd probably be able to deal with it without too much risk to you. So we're gonna call combat to a close there. Um, oh, it's not gonna got... come to my turret mode. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Your turret mode was very clever and set up very well. It just got dealt with too fast. Um, these zombies, because they're so slow, um, they do a lot of damage if they hit you. But as long as you're sort of careful about it, two isn't much of a risk. Um, if, if if you signed like when the army, there were six of them, yeah, you you need to run. But your characters have determined that like one on one, you guys can probably take one of these things with a little bit of careful thought. Um, two on one, you can probably easily take on one. Uh, once it gets to two on two, it's a bit more of a fair fight. And the bigger the number gets, the more you're going to have to run for it. Mm -hmm. um, what's left in the room is, is is two twitching zombies that you can deal with at your leisure. Um, they're, 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 they're sort of crawling around the floor. Literally, you can walk ahead of these things and they won't be able to catch you. Um, they're still completely silent, which is which is creepy as balls. Uh, you've got several destroyed desks. Now, all of these science desks have been destroyed by grenades. Um, you've got three computer console interface terminals uh, on desks, one of which has its screen blown out, and you have a uh, what appears to be some kind of containment unit uh, with two holes cut in the containment glass with snow forming on the floor. You've got the Christmas unit over there. You've got the Christmas unit. <laughs> it's just so, snow and multicolored thing in the middle. So essentially, you came into a lab, which was nice and pristine and clean. You blew out one of the computers, destroyed all six of the lab stations, and cut open the cryo containment unit. You guys are hard on rooms. <laughs> <laughs> you... <laughs> the, term... the term salvage implies that there's something left over when you leave, <laughs> as opposed to just wreckage. Okay, this turned from salvage to frickin' space zombies. <laughs> no longer do rules apply. <laughs> So, what would you guys like to do? I wanna, I wanna, you know, I'll finish off the legless wonder here and search said zombie for key cards, access passes, anything. Information. Okay, so I'll use the computer whatever. kit on this here. Okay, so Savrik searches the zombies. Um, he, he goes up to them. He, he 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 cuts pieces off them to make sure they're not going to be a problem. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> every every freaking computer chip. It's a four. It's a four. It's a four. 
the dice are role playing. You're, you're legitimately, okay. legitimately honest. The dice are role playing with you. So Savrick searches the bodies. He finds that um, both of the bodies have these face masks with uh, hit filters. Um, uh, obviously designed to filter out uh, particulate matter and things like that. Um, they're both wearing lab coats. They're both wearing disposable throwaway trousers and disposable throwaway shoes uh, made of a kind of paper-like substance, uh, but much more fabric-like than we'd get nowadays. Um, it, it, it's basically almost as good as cotton, but it's made from uh, disposable uh, papery substance. Um, and other than that, like both of them are, they have no ID on them. They have no other sort of um communications devices on them um essentially like the, these people would have had other than the, the computers at the desks no way of contacting anyone on the station or anything like that um which is odd for a station like most people carry a personal radio just in case of like systems going down hmm. okay so since I'm gonna... i failed horribly on this computer here I, I, can i, I come give a shot into the container Look at it intently, see if there's anything I can find about this thing, if it's moving, if it's a creature, and I ran a spot oh, so, check of 15. Oh my god. So, so Blaster Toad uh, starts messing with the computer. He, he fails miserably and he goes and starts peering through the tank wall. Um, in the meantime, Savrick's done his search and he, comes right. over and he, he starts looking at the computer as well. Um, yeah, you mind if I grab that tacky thing and give it a shot? Fine, screw it, it's not helping me. Um, the. Yep. Uh, the first thing that Savrick, um, Savrick notices is that the computer screen is flashing red and it's saying um, uh, cryophalia, cryophalia. Um, and as Blastertoad leans in and looks through the um, glass, the, the thing inside, the amorphous thing inside, um, is uh, moving slightly and is also taking on a little bit of shape. Um, it, it, it kind of turns and twists and it has um, thick bulbous limbs, um, a bit like uh, tree trunk style limbs, but made of, of like fleshy uh, bulbs. Um, and it's got a, a round uh, flabby uh, body that has uh, cuts and, and scratches in it. And it has a face very similar to an animal face. It's got an elongated jaw um, and it turns towards you and it's got uh, dark black eyes and um, so what you're doing is describing my ex right now. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so it's Savrit's yeah. ex, Savrit's ex in a tank, um, <laughs> um, and, and because the, the 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 cuts in the glass, even though they're on the other side, um, you manage to make out the thing is actually speaking uh, or actually or actually making noise, um, which is perhaps a, a both a benefit and a curse because um, as you sort of uh, focus on the fact that it's it's moving its jaw and it's making noise. It, the the creepy thing happens, and, and you realise that it's actually approximating a kind of human speech. Uh, and and um, it's it's in a, a kind of thick, um, almost clicky voice. Um, it's going. Wait 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 me. You still got one grenade left, right? <laughs> yeah, but I ain't wasting it because. Just in case, you have a battery bomb left. You have two. Is this thing just standing in a tank, or is it like in a floating in a fluid tank? Uh, it is basically flopped on the floor of this tank. Um, this 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 bulbous thing with with four thick, um, uh, almost like growth covered limbs. Okay, it's not and, quite uh, moving at full speed yet. I want to finish cutting a hole in this where I started, and drop an acid bomb in the tank with it. Okay, so you start cutting a hole in it, and it, it, it kind of twists its head around to look at you, and it goes, wah, 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 wah. Um, I'm not listening to it. I, I'm just yeah. listening to the saw blades. Saw blades yeah, running. I'm going to walk away. I'm just going to wander um, off. I don't so, want so, so, so Savrik is walking away, but the, the kind of like animal face is kind of distorting. The lips are pulling back as it, it tries to to manage to speak in an, in, in, in an understandable language. The, the thick tongue is twisting in, in ways that just are almost obscene. And the black eyes are staring at you as, as you cut this hole. Wait, 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 me, 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 me. Stop, stop, stop. stop. It so you've cut a hole. So, so you've cut a hole in the tank. Um, what do you do now? Oh god damn! <laughs> I hate you. 
Dude, why do you think I just booked it? He <laughs> <laughs> mm. asking why I woke it. Asking why I woke it. I don't know why I woke it. To kill it. Just tell it to kill it. Just be straight up. <laughs> I ready the bomb to drop in there. And okay. Just. Oh. Uh, oh, damn it. Now I can't. There we go. Now I can move around again. Um, damn it. As I'm about to drop the bomb in, I, I, I over the zombies just like flick my head that way to indicate to the te the creature that that's the subject matter of my conversation and just ask, is this your doing? W w was um, this it, you? Is, is, is this it's your It's kind doing? of looking at you with big black eyes. Um... No, no whites, no colors, just big black eyes set into a, a stretched animal, um, kind of dog cross, um, sort of like, um, oh, the freaking dogs are head. back. <laughs> um, and and it, as, as you pull out the bomb and you, you start fiddling with the, the mechanical electronic device that you put on top of the, the, the battery to fit into a bomb, it, its eyes widen and, and, and it, its lips pull back. Um, and it shows um, kind of blunt teeth, the not sort of teeth you'd expect in a canine head, um, kind of like almost like a human-like set of teeth, but kind of stretched backwards to fit a, a, an animalistic mouth. And, and it looks at the, the battery and it, it seems to almost like grin at you and it goes, yes, 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 end, 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 end. Shit. But it doesn't answer your question. It didn't, no. God it's it's you. thick stub it's thick stubby limbs seem to start sort of like reaching towards the, the, the battery bomb you're holding. <laughs> Are you gonna kill the dog creature? Or are you it's just off. gonna <laughs> <laughs> uh... The, the bulbous mutant that appears to be trying to get hold of the bomb but is, is trapped inside a glass tank. From my observations of it now, <laughs> is, is it... The, the bulbous blob thing, like, is it viscosis enough to get through the hole I've made or no? Oh, God, no. It, it's got limbs and it's got um, uh, joints and things like that. It's, it's obviously a... a sort of solid creature, it's just the, the flesh covering its body is so um, bulbous and, and swollen that it's not, it's, it's not a... I close my capable... helmet, I turn off my external microphones, and I walk over to the computer. I'm oh, not listening wow. to this thing anymore. That's freaking weird. Oh, wow. So as you walk away, um, Savrick hears a, a, a high-pitched screech um, from, from the cart, from the sort of uh, Jeffrey's tube that he's hidden in. <laughs> Um, and it, it sounds like um, someone's just stabbed this thing in the chest and twisted the knife. Um, it, it's it's how it's almost like a howl of pain as as you walk off from it. I don't hear any of this. No, you don't. Savrick, is it? Yeah, you don't. no. <laughs> oh, I, I'm checking out these computers, just trying to find out anything I can. I'm going to just prolonged search the computers. Okay, because so rolling a skill check isn't going to do me dick here. I'm just going to sit down so, and figure this out, and so I'm gonna... look away from this thing. <laughs> this, it, it doesn't I'm, exist anymore. <laughs> oh goddamn! Okay. okay, you guys don't you. understand how visual my imagination can be. <laughs> this is like freaking the dog girl from Full Metal Alchemist. Yes. Okay. Yes. That that is That's, what I'm yeah. envisioning here, yeah. and I'm just like, no, no, uh, screw this. No, I can't hear it. I can't so... see it. Just computers, computers, and some okay, computer so, shit over so here. Okay, so Blaster Toad sits down, and Blaster Toad, with his external mics turned off, he's still connected to the radio by uh, to Sabrich radio, but with his external mics turned off, he sits down at the computer, and he's, he just <clears> tunnel visions. <throat> he just sits down All and right. tunnel visions on this computer and starts typing away. Um, this is going to take a little while. So, what's Sabrich up to in the meantime? Okay. Can I broadcast the external mic through the internal radio into his helmet? <laughs> no, no, you can't. <laughs> Shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, <laughs> I just hope you'd be an asshole. Um, <laughs> I would have to you with my three, three min wires. <laughs> yeah, you probably would have rolled twenty on them too, son of yep. a bitch. All right, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go treat injury. I need to get back up there. Okay, so oh my god. <clears throat> As far as like, um, uh, sorry, I just dropped my um, computing devices. Come back, computing oh, geez. device. <laughs> come back, computing device. You're on the floor. You're supposed to be on my um, desk. Come back here. Come back here. Come back here. So, um, because you've treated injury twice um, as a first aid thing, um, you can't really treat injury uh, again without um, taking the, okay. the, the time to uh, make it a, a proper medical procedure. Um, yeah. Which uh, I will. I'm taking time here to search. Yeah, so this, I'm, so... while he's doing that, I'll I'll waste as much time as need be until he's done being a little bitch. Okay, so so Savric basically curls up in the Jeffrey's tube and starts starts treating his own injuries. Yeah, self medicating. Yeah, self usual. Yep. Um, so um, uh, one d uh, one d four plus two um, heal. Four more hit points. You're not doing too badly on healing yourself. Um, like in the meantime, Toad is sitting there, and literally Toad has tunnel visioned on this computer. The rest of the world no longer exists, and Toad is just tied away. It takes him quite a while, um, but he does manage to dig through. They're not, surprisingly, not heavily security terminals. It's just well, it's digging through the actual... the wall. Mm. It's just mm. digging through the interfaces. Um, and you pick up, basically, it's, it's a whole set of um, research and... Um, data point documents um you're not an expert in biological sciences but this is obviously some kind of biological science system um, or biological science research that's going on um it's to do with uh, microbials it's to do with uh, chemical interactions between different kinds of microbials um, and as you go through you start to find a, a set of charts um, which are an odd set of charts that you don't really like you can understand the charts but you don't understand what they mean in and it, it's basically weight um, measured against a um, standardized test of intelligence in the future um, and, and it's it's almost like a bet it's almost like a curve um, and basically it's suggesting that the heavier something is the more intelligent it is which which is nonsense <laughs> so it's like um, swarming brain cells if that's what your character wants to think, <laughs> like if, if that's what your character wants to make of it, it it's simply uh, along one side of the chart is, is weight and along the other side of the chart is, is intelligence and, and there is a curve as weight goes up, so does intelligence. And underneath there's a whole set of research data in, in quite complicated scientific script. Is there any sort of display inside the tank? Not as far as you can tell. Mm, there's not like a terminal that I could communicate with the thing by text. I don't <clears throat> talk to it. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Weird. Um, so, so, so you're still sitting there going through the computer data. Is there anything else you can do? Walk to the hallway and open up my helmet again. So, so you walk into the hallway, you open up your helmet. As you open up your helmet, um, the creature in the corner is still sort of uh, wailing away as if as if it's been shot, um, almost weeping but <laughs> screaming and weeping at the same time. Um, so it's and, okay. Um, okay. Okay. So Savrik approaches the tank, and as yeah, he approaches gonna, the tank, the I'm the, 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 the creature oh, puts all, all four of its limbs on 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 the glass, and it kind of stares wide eyes at Savrik, and it, it it it's crying kind of peters off, uh, and it goes. Yes, and, 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 and. I'm a. Uh, uh, I'm a real sense. No. Yeah, sense motive quickly. Okay. Okay, that's a reasonably high roll. Um, plus five. So. This thing is completely alien. You've never seen anything like this by, before. <clears throat> but if you were to link your knowledge of this thing to 
body language and voice patterns and things that you understand from human beings. The way it stares and pulls its lips back, it's obviously desperate and 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 um, possibly slightly insane. And and from the way it's speaking and the way it's the noises it makes, and 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 the words it's saying, it, it wants to die. It's 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 doing its best to beg for you to kill it but at the same time it also seems to be hesitant it, there seems to be something holding it back from just flat out and asking you to kill it um but but it seems to to be slightly desperate for itself to be killed hmm. okay i will yeah i'll do the main thing i'll put a little bit of misery with a shotgun yeah, it's, okay, it's actually roll this time. Holy shit. There you go. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, so this thing's sitting in a tank and is completely stationary. Despite that, you stick your shotgun through the hole and fucking miss. Um, and just little bits of lead scatter around the tank. Um, and, and the creature, seemingly sort of trying to help, kind of like presses its face against the shotgun. Um, it's... it's, it's... <laughs> 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 it's just so pitiful. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, man. So so this oh. thing has now pressed itself to the shotgun. What do you do? <laughs> oh god. I guess I'll fire again. Okay, so you don't have to you don't have to shoot this time. Thank this god. thing is literally um and, and um there is a, a crack and a splatter and the inside of the tank is covered in, in a mix of red and, and pink matter and um the moment that happens, the creature stops making. <clears throat> the, the creature makes one more noise, one kind of last huff sound as its as its lungs empty. It stops making noise, and then uh, roll a reflex save, please. Very good. Um, your, your character leaps backwards um, as you notice that the second this thing's head is destroyed, uh, one of the thick bulbous limbs launches forward. It manages to force its through, force its limb through the hole, um, scra scraping flesh off its arm, um, and uh, the the stubby, uh, sharp claws on the end of its its limb are, are trying to grasp at you um, from the hole um, <clears throat> that, that 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 it's reaching through. Um, but now it's just like the the dead things you've been fighting. It is now completely silent. It's not making any noise. It's not yelling. It's it's just trying to get at you with its arm. Okay. It just ejected one of its arms like a gecko. Uh, it, not quite. Its arm is still attached to itself. But where? Oh, it's the just free... blast, blast Yeah, it's, it's just hole. just just shoved it through the hole, ripping flesh off the outside of it as if it was nothing, as if it doesn't feel pain. Are you announcing over, um, this, over the radio, or have I just been yeah, walking away uh, in silence? No. Yeah, you were walking away. Now that everything's kind of happened, I, I'm i going to let you know that shit went even more sideways. Shit's upside down, topsy turvy, and I'm getting attacked by its uh, disembodied arm. Not quite disembodied. Well, no, it's still attached. It's, it's, um, Not disembodied yet. <laughs> one, one thing you do notice, though, is that... Um, once you blew its head off, it suddenly started moving a hell of a lot faster. Um, like when it was sitting in the tank, it was kind of like ponderously dragging itself around the tank um, while it had its head and was talking. Now with its head gone, it's it's deadly silent. It's not making any noise, and it, its limb lunged at you like like a snake. It it snapped at you as if um, as if it was a a, a a whip. It just went out, and it's torn flesh off itself to try and get at you. Okay. However, from what you can tell, the tank itself is still intact, and like the the, the gap around the cut hole isn't opening further. <laughs> okay, I will. Uh... I've got the door open. That's all I'm saying is I've got the door open. Yeah. So you're just gonna wait out there for and see if I'm gonna follow or not, or you're not gonna. I'm just keep on walking. I'm getting away from this. That was right. that was just bad. All right. Um. You know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try to blow its arm off, blow its arm right, right in half. What's what's the point? I, Just leave it in the. Because I want to find out what it is. If I, it's still gonna be stuck in a tank, I just want to find out what it is. Still got three other limbs to come after you with. It'll like stick its toes out at you next. <laughs> All so, right. So you you lose left yet another shotgun round. How many shotgun rounds did you have, by the way? You said forty, so now I have thirty-six. 
Right, you, you've gone down to 36 shells. No, 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 that, the 40 was your... Um... I also put, yeah, 40 shells as well. Oh, okay. I picked up 40, yeah. There you go. Oops, that's backwards. You're spending all your <laughs> ammo on this damn thing. Two shots, that's it. So, you you sort of whip out your shotgun and, and discharge a, uh, a spattering of um, shell, a spattering of shot into the wall behind the arm. And this thing's arm is still stuck out of the tank. Um, it, it, it seems to have kind of wedged itself in the hole and its claws are still reaching out of the tank, sort of claw clawing the thin air, trying to reach towards you. I'm just sitting here with my back against the corridor, sitting in the yeah, corridor, staring at a door, listening to like this half muffled shit show through the microphone of your open helmet. Yeah, I'm a... I'm gonna leave that. I'm not I'm gonna dealing with that anymore. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go. You're, you're, you're just peeing in the corridor. This is messed up. No. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Alright. Are I'm, you too I'm broken yet? Have I destroyed your psyche? A <laughs> little bit, a little bit. Well, I'm just gonna close this door and leave. I'm just gonna sit, sit, let's pretend that room doesn't didn't doesn't no. That's a no. Okay. Just no. So so you've um <laughs> Oh I'm sorry, but it's so much fun to have destroyed you people so completely. <laughs> okay. So um having um kind of like shut that door and, and walked away, um uh, and decided that that particular um, delight doesn't exist anymore. Um, you you now sort of find yourself in the control room. There's a light dustering of powder. You head off down the corridor. There's, there's Blastertone sort of leaning against the wall, just just cat, almost semi catatonic now, um, <laughs> because you, you've broken him so completely by um... <laughs> absolutely demolishing. That thing, <laughs> uh, and so, um, so, okay. so you have to sit. <laughs> you okay, Toad? Okay, so as I'm sitting here, freaking trying to wipe the image of Dog Man Pillsbury Dough Gumby out of my head. <laughs> uh, um, the the charts the the weights on the charts corresponding to gaining intelligence with weight. What mm. kind of masses were they? Were they like human sized uh, masses? Were they animal sized masses? Or they were like particulate masses? Like what kind of? What because kind of you understand the, at? because you've been through the schooling system system on um, Ipton, um, you you understand the the basic intelligence test uh, scores. For for a human, the intelligence test scores you'd be expecting to see are sort of like um, 80 to 100 on, on an average human. Um, and this thing was showing that um, from a five kilogram mass, you would be expecting to get about five intelligence on this score, score rating. Five kilogram, um, I'm just trying to put that into size. Um, roughly the size of human size head. Of cat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and to go up to about 75, 80, so the lower end of human intelligence, um, you'd be looking to get up to about 160 kilograms, which is roughly twice the size of a human uh, mass-wise. Um, of course, because this has no information, or from what you've read, this had no information about density. Um, if this was an extremely dense substance they were talking about, such as um, compressed uh, hyper-superconductive um, uh, processing units uh, used by spaceships, uh, you could get that weight into something roughly the size of a, a small suitcase um, of exceedingly densely packed uh, processing units and get a lot more intelligence out of it. So um, uh, again, there's no, there no sort of talk about density, but something roughly twice the weight of a human being um, would give you something roughly thing. human intelligence. Yeah. Okay. But as you're adding mass to other critters, I'm just mulling things over based on, yeah, Pillsbury Doe Gumby Dog Man. You find that funny, yeah. but that's like this amorphous blob with a man, man dog face that can stretch around like freaking Gumby. It's, yeah, it's. 
I'm just sitting here, and at this point, I'm using my remote control to just open and close this door in front of me. <laughs> open door, look down, close door, look down, Toad, open door. Toad's open. character is broken. Oh. Yeah. I think he's just broken, damn. <laughs> I, was fully, I was fully ready to deal with it until it's... No. I rolled a five. No. <laughs> How many rounds did you expend on that thing? Two. Okay. Three. Three. I slap you. Oh. <laughs> okay, hey, at um, least, it, at least it's not away. talking anymore. Um, at least it's not yeah, talking exactly. anymore. <laughs> Is the silence worse or better? Oh, Why it's are not you screaming walking inside anymore? a wall? <laughs> I, that's you, dumbass. Corridor. Mass. Corridor, mass. Get yeah, inside I was, the building. I was in the corridor, jackass. Uh, he may have his map slightly offset on his screen. Ah, uh, okay. Because uh, it, it's a web page, you can actually shift the map's position slightly. Um, right. we, we, we will assume we know roughly where he is, um, and that he's not crawling through a solid wall. So since I've yeah. been opening and closing this wall random, or this door randomly, yep. walls... Uh, have I seen anything just down its length? So you, you open and close the door a couple of times, and directly through the door you see what appears to be a cafeteria. Um, it's got uh, metal benches and, and metal tables, and it's got um, like food rack uh, storage and cooling and cooking devices mounted across the wall. Um, it, it appears to be a cafeteria, as you'd expect on a space station, that's not commercial. It, it appears to be like free food, um, free cooking, Sit down, eat communal communal um, meals, sort of thing. Okay. Oh, with a heavy sigh, I slowly bring myself to the feet. My feet pushing myself off the wall with my arms. Grab the door frame and just kind of like peek out around the door. Look <laughs> at that manipulation of the token. That is Beautiful. Awesome. P perfect manipulation of the token. Do I see Represented anything down the him. end of the hall? Roll a spot check for me. Uh, like stuck my head fully outside. You still have to like see if you see. Oh, you. <laughs> well, it's better than so, the fours I was getting, so I got a six this time. Okay, so you stick your head around the corner, and and it, it as far as you can tell, it's a cafeteria. There's food laid out on the tables. Uh, you don't see any bodies. You don't see any blood spray. Um, there's a couple of plants on one of the uh, tables near the end. Um, there's obviously <coughs> food missing from the food containers. Like several of the food dispensaries are left open, hanging open, um, and the the cooking devices are um, kind of closed up. A couple of the food dispensaries are left closed, but mo uh, like probably about two-thirds of them have been left with their doors hanging wide open. Okay. All right. Um, so you just say, like, regular station food stuff? Yeah, regular, sta regular sort okay. of non-commercial station food. Is this, um... Like, it's not dehydrated or... Like, it's just pre-packaged stuff, or is it, like, fresh produce they have regularly shipped in or what kind of food um, stuff? It's, because it's a deep space station, most of it is um, kind of like steel packed, packaged. Um, it's a bit like a cross between being freeze dried and um, being vacuum packed. Um, it's not quite freeze dried. I walk over to one of the currently closed units and start digging around looking for a turkey flavored meal pack. <laughs> Okay, so, oh. so you find um, uh, you find a meal pack that um, is a, a turkey a vegetable. Um, I was so um, expecting you to just be like you. You've been rummaging through here, and you're finding a beef and like this potluck dinner and. Uh, no, no, no! You, you chicken parmesan, you find... but you can't find a freaking turkey, and be like, screw it, I'll take a beef. But no, no okay, you, I found the turkey. You find okay. turkey. Um, I just it, sit it down here, elbows on table, and head rip it open and start the... eating it. I just head hanging over it, just waiting, like, um, I, it, it I might eat it, but I'm just yeah. sitting there. It doesn't look much like turkey, and it, it, it probably should be cooked before you eat it. It's it's basically like a, um, a rectangular uh, a cuboid block mm -hmm. um, of um, processed, vacuum-sealed, <coughs> freeze-dried meat product. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it 
possibly once was maybe originally turkey, and it will probably taste like turkey. <laughs> All right, now I'm just kind of staring at it. So All right, I'm gonna consuming the situation, not the food. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, I'm head, I just need to take I'm, a pause. <laughs> I'm gonna head over here and I'm gonna actually roll to hide. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna hide in the fridge. Now, you don't like console the broken soul and like heat up his food for him no. or anything. He's like, I'm gonna hide no. in the fridge. Woo! <laughs> Such a I'm dick. Gonna, I, before I, I want that, and I'm gonna peek around the corner here and see what's down this area. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so. You you kind of like press yourself against the corner and, and, and peek around the corner. Uh, it's a it's a straight corridor, um, reasonably well lit, and um, there's doors going off to the left and right. Um, each of the doors um, has it's it's not an internal door, as much as like the corridor doors are internal doors. These are more uh, what we call privacy doors. Um, so they're very like very light doors. Non substantial thing. Exactly. It wouldn't stop atmospheric de depressurization or anything like that, um, <clears throat> as the internal doors would, and it certainly wouldn't act like an airlock as the airlock doors would. Um, you could probably kick one in if you wanted to, um, but they're all closed, and the corridor seems nice and peaceful and quiet. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna head down and check out this door here. Is it see if it's unlocked or? Um, all of them are locked, but they're locked with a, a very primitive um, kind of like electronic uh, rollover catch. Uh, the kind of thing that someone would just kind of tap an ID badge against the wall and the thing would just click itself open. Okay. okay. Uh, we still have two of those ID off badges. The, off the table, just done with it all. Straight up quit. here, uh, how wide is this call corridor? Uh, it, it's roughly sort of like seven foot wide. It's it's a nice with, open corridor. With the reach of other. my my exoskeletal arms, could I pass side to side? Like could yeah, I you could side just side? you could just about you could just about manage to block the corridor if you wanted. Okay, I try to get as much reach as I can, extending the exoskeletal arms with the saw blades at the end. Aim them so okay. they're about the length or height of the lock walk or the locks. Turn them on and just start walking down the hallway, scoring the sides. <laughs> All right, done. I'm, I'm gonna. Done. I, I was gonna. Just I was gonna lay loss. down. Just I, I was loss. gonna duck. I yeah, was gonna so, so, not deal with that. <laughs> so, so Savrik kind of curls up in the corner of the corridor. You walk past him. Um, there's a, a, a sharp sort of like metal rasping sound as you walk down the corridor. As you go past the um, interior doors, you basically cut through the thin metal that they're made of, and, and you basically cut the doors in half as you go past, um, essentially rendering the locks useless um, with a little bit of pressure. Like although you don't manage to cut deep enough to actually cut the locking mechanisms open, um, with a little bit of pressure, you could simply bend the door off the lock and just flick it open now um and and um you've made a huge amount of noise there's, there's been screeching of metal and metal and and, and grinding and um <laughs> and, and and your character just like walks up to the end door and and, and just kind of like i'm leaning against rests, the door just just, just like rests himself on the door just like yep that that that's that they're unlocked now <laughs> deal with it thing. <laughs> all right you're I'm enjoying gonna... this way too much. <laughs> oh, I did not. His ass off. I, I did not realize that that thing would break you so completely. <laughs> okay, I'll, let's I'll, get this I'm in perspective, boost. okay? So we come onto a station. It's like, okay, I'm used to salvaging stuff. Let's just like catalog some things, and we're gonna see what's happening here, and you know, like fun space stuff, like. Probably there's going to be some dead people, which will just, like, you know, poke with a stick and make sure they're down and, you know, walk off with some cargo and crap. Or there's people here and we charge them money and walk off with cargo and crap. But no, it's like, oh, space zombies. You just took a giant, well, I guess not giant, but a large Fuck space right cutting tool to disembody one. <laughs> and then sodomize another space zombie with said large cutting tool. Then, freak the hell out, get left on a station because some asshat doesn't have the brain power to say, screw this, let's go home. 
<laughs> then drive yourself a freaking truck into a med bay. Just crash into a med table, driving through a store. Find a woman, mug her, because, you know, that's the thing you do now without even realizing it. Just like, give me your key card. I'm done. Like, you just got traumatized, but give me your key card. I need to get out of here. Okay? Then scorch earth the place. Just decompress the whole freaking place. Now we got low oxygen and, like, headaches and heavy breathing and all that. Walk through a corridor where you just killed a bunch of animals for no reason you realize afterwards. It's just like, crap, what have I done? And then find out they're named. Okay, like, you're going through and, like, you just lean on the wall of these cages and you're like, what the hell have I done? And then you start flicking through the console and you're like, frickin' Fluffy, the station pet, was in the cage. The shit. Okay? And uh... then, to top it off, right after you're like, god damn, what have I done? You walk around the corner, okay, and for those of you who are just jumping into the video now or have watched this far, this is a complete recap of what's happened in our previous session. You walk around the corner to see, god, there's this messed up, like, mutated body, and your resident fellow crew member just nonchalantly cutting off its hands. Like, not phasing him at all. <laughs> not phasing him, okay? And then, yep. freaking dog person Pillsbury Doughboy talking, almost begging you to kill it. It's just like, no, I'm... Fuck this. <laughs> It's not even space zombies anymore. It's just like, what the, the what the hell? <laughs> get me out of here. Oh, oh coach, like let, let, let's just let's just get it done. You wanted these doors unlocked? Fine, they're unlocked. Like just cut them <laughs> down. We're we're over. Like, let's. Okay, yeah. Yep. Okay. Do a so, thing, so, so, all right. Oh. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna boot that door down. Okay, so Savrock kicks his way into the, the first room um, and, and uh, finds the room to be a, a pretty average, um, kind of like mid-level, um, uh, in uh, basically what's called a hot bedroom. There's two wardrobes, a desk and a computer, a single bed with, with quick change sheets, um, and it's designed so that one person sleeps, um, gets up, um, changes clothes, and heads out to um, work or heads out to use the station, and another person comes back, strips off, changes the, or uses the system to quickly change the sheets over, sort of like flipping the bed around to a second bed, um, and, and goes to sleep. Um, so it's, it's, it's a rapid sort of switch over, um, and pretty basic, like the, the um, cupboards contain clothing, um, the, the desk is a simple computer, um, primarily for personal use, but obviously has interface with the station. Um, it, it's not a comfy room, but it's, it's certainly a functional room. It's the sort of room you'd expect on a deep station. Okay. I'm gonna... I'm gonna <laughs> enter it and roll a roll check. Mm. Okay. Oh. You yeah. good? <coughs> Is Toad alive? I was not expecting there to be so many grounds at the bottom of that. <laughs> <laughs> I just was drinking straight out of my French press, and yeah, there's like a bunch of like... Oh my god. Yeah, you know, Like, not like the full grounds, but like that scuzzy stuff that's at like the bottom half inch of a French press, if you've let it sit for 20 <laughs> yeah. minutes. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that was hard okay. to swallow. Okay. Mm. That's so, gonna be a beautiful yeah. moment in the video. Oh man, my eyes are watering and everything. Mm. Oh, Did the coffee yeah. help, Toad? Did no, the coffee help? Fuck that. <laughs> Just tried to kill me. Freaking amorphous dogman Gumby Doughboy is freaking asking me to kill me, and then the coffee comes back and tries to do me in. Oh. <laughs> so, so I pulls myself off search, my ass right? and I look in this room. Sure. Why not? Let's okay. Do a thing. So, um, you guys dig through these rooms. Um, all of them seem to be pretty much like um, fine. Like you, you can't, you don't find any corpses. You don't find any blood. In the bottom left room, um, approximately here, sitting on the desk, um, you find a plant. 
um, in a pot. Uh, there's been some plants in the other rooms, but this plant in the pot, um, you can't really identify it. It's, it's, it's um, it looks like some kind of vine and it, it's it's grown up around a frame that's in the pot um but the vines seem to go thick and thin and and um, seem to be twisted around on each other and as you get close to it the vines kind of sort of slowly wave in your direction as, as, as if this thing has some kind of movement to it um, and it just kind of waves at you um it, it's a tiny little thing it's like a foot tall um it's it's just kind of waves its vines at you when you get close other than that, like you find clothing, you find some personal effects, you find a like a, a I love you, I love you teddy bear in one of the cupboards, and, um, just some personal bits and pieces, photographs, um, some some personal like non-uniform clothing. Um, do uh, do any of the photographs resemble the chick in the, the other room who hates us? Yes. Yes, yes. Um, in okay. the, the sort of centre bottom room, some of the photographs you find uh, in one of the cupboards, or sort of on the inside door of one of the cupboards, uh, they, they are photographs of her and a young man, roughly the same age, uh, with short black hair, and they're sort of like hugging. Uh, obviously, on a planet surface somewhere, it's not Ipton because it's not an industrialised planet. It seems to be um, some kind of like almost like <laughs> park. Um, probably, by your guess, it's probably on um, Morim. Or, or one of the sort of like less industrialized planets. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you're stealing this woman's photographs. Okay. You just... are a creepy bastard. <laughs> Dude, she hates us. I'm gonna bring her something that I can't. Look at what you I found. <laughs> As you caress the photo. Oh goddamn. Not at all what I'm picturing. Not at all what I'm picturing. I'm going to the you know, try to be a nice guy route. <laughs> The, okay. um, <laughs> the, the, the food, <clears throat> cooking, rehydrating, whatever the hell, make it edible machine. Mm -hmm. it, is it, like, portable like a microwave, or is it, like, built into the station, or could, like, I yank it out? Um, it's built into the station, but can you do me a um, survival roll, please? Survival roll? Uh, which would be plus six to your roll. Eight. Um, Savrik, can you do me a survival roll, please? Okay. Okay, so Savrik's survival is much, much better. Um, and, and you have a little conversation over the radios, and you, you mention the fact that, like, the food is inedible. But, well, it's not inedible, um, but the food is when freeze-dried, it needs to be put through this processing machine. Savrik turns around and tells you, well, if you want it to taste good, and if you don't, if you sort of, like, want to be able to eat it easily but like the chewy blocks of food that you get in the, the vacuum packed stuff as long as you're not going for the um red meat ones um you can just crack them open and, and chew on them like they're uh, kind of like un un watered down jelly like jelly cubes and, and they're they're perfectly edible and they won't can't harm you in that state okay 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 um, the desks here, I suppose there's some sort of storage. Is it like an on-rail storage system that I can pull a drawer out? Yep, yeah, you can pull a couple of drawers out on the desk. Okay, I, I pull a drawer out and empty its contents. I don't give a damn about that. Okay. I throw your freaking moving plant in the drawer. Okay. And then I go collect as much food crap I can put in there. Um, the chemical detection unit, does it have a storage tank that we can drop things directly in it to be analyzed, or is it just like a room sniffer? It's just a room sniffer. Okay. Um, there's no analyzing. Um... Uh, any of the packaging here in the food department, can it be resealed? Uh, quite a lot of it can be resealed. Um, um, some of it can't be, but uh, most of it you could uh, reseal using the machinery that's available. Machinery that's available, okay. None within, of it's just like a Ziploc container or something. Uh, what would you say? No, no, it's just like a Ziploc container or something, eh? Oh, you, you're just looking for like a uh, like a. I'm just looking container. for like a Tupperware, like a Ziploc bag or something like that. Um, if you went into, like, went round a couple of the rooms, you'd find that there's a couple of, um, like, zip bags and, and uh, things in people's personal sort of property. There's okay. a couple of, like, um, 
airtight bags that you can open and close. Okay, I want one of those airtight bags. Okie dokie. Okay. Um, I will leave my container of crap just on one of these tables for now. So let's grab a token for there's my container of crap. Okay. I Along take my that. airlock bag and I start walking back towards the control room. Okie dokie. So, so you've you've headed back to the control room. Savrik, what are you up to? This this guy's just kind of like walked past with a a a, a, a drawer from one of the desks and just headed into the yeah, area. Yeah, he's he's been seemingly going full retard and not saying anything. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wander around to search all the other rooms. I want to make sure we get. You're everything not wondering useful. what's happened with the guy who's just like broken and fuck it and sawed no, a building in half. If you can't. If you can't deal with it, that's that's just sad. But I mean, you know, I I, I think to a certain extent, on. like I think to a certain extent, like Savrock might also be having a mind mental breakdown because he's not acknowledging just, that yeah. like, he needs your help or anything like that. No, he's just, no. I'm just I'm no. just I'm just here. I'm just gonna do my job. I'm, I can do it. It's just yeah. Just let me let me just find shit. <laughs> Let me just find what I can that's useful. <laughs> so, so Toad's wandered off back to the control room. Savrick is literally like he's opening people's personal belongings. He's looking in pockets. Yeah. He's like like gone gone full he's on autistic full search mode. Creepy yeah, mode. <laughs> yeah. God damn it, dude. The autism <laughs> is real, man. The autism, <laughs> autism is real. Autism is real. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be a great quote on the uh, video on YouTube. Oh man. <laughs> Do I find anything of use though? That's the. Uh, let, let's see what Blaster Toad's up to while you do your deep search. Okay, so I'm coming okay. through. The zombies are they still pretty much in the their same places? They're just flipping about yeah. over there. Uh, yep, uh, Savrick went and, and, and did a little bit of cutting in the meantime, but uh, you've got two two zombies here just kind of like um, being the, the usual kind of cut pieces, but still okay. strangely mobile. Um, yeah, I'll stand here just out of range of the arm. Is the arm still flailing about? Uh, it was stationary when you were out of the room, but as you get close to it, um, it's 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 been skinned where it's been forced through the hole and it's dripping blood and things. But as you get close to it, it starts to flex again, um, and, and and the claws start kind of like trying to grab through the air to get to you. Okay, I don my two rip or my two saw blades. Okay. Okay, I push them forward about with about a foot and a half gap in between them. And yep. turn them on, and just leave the stationary arms there, while yep. like leaning back to balance them ahead of myself. Okay. And I don my ripper, and I just go full bore on the arm. Okay. So um. So that's four four sixes and two eights. Uh, and uh, a d twenty to hit. Yep. Uh, two d twenty. One for the one for the blades, and one for the um, ripper. Oh, you fuck on and okay. <laughs> Okay, so 2d8. Two D, two D um... So apparently I didn't hit with the... How did I not hit with the arms? I'm just... I guess they're kind of like flailing around as I'm trying to walk because there's no bottom stabilization on this crap. I got eight. Okay, so so uh, a piece of wall rips off as you kind of jam the magnetic ripper in the right direction and, and um, rip a piece of metal through the arm. Unfortunately, the magnetic waves from the magnetic ripper also move the two pneumatic arms because the pressure isn't set. Um, to resist that kind of force, and the two magnetic arms just kind of, the two pneumatic arms just kind of flick down and, and gouge chunks out of the floor um, uh, and kind of kick sparks up around your legs. Um, but <laughs> you do close. manage to, like, you do manage to, like, rip the uh, rip the piece of metal through its arm and, like, sever its arm. It immediately and silently wicks round in the tank, um, Almost like a, a like like someone turning around sharply, mm -hmm. and another arm another arm snaps out through the hole, and um, uh, because you're slightly out of range, it, it starts clawing at you. And again, there's a spray of blood as the the skin is ripped off because it's too thick to fit through the hole. Okay. The severed arm that's mostly neutralized. Can I can I grab at it without being hit by the other flailing arm? Uh, you could go down on all fours and like crawl under the reach of the flailing arm and, yeah, and, and drag it back out. I just want to grab a piece of severed flesh off it and s jab, jam that in the bag. Okay. Like so you something have a piece that's of come flesh off. In the bag. Okay. Yep. I'm gonna just walk back now. Okay, so Sabrick, in the meantime, you've been searching rooms. Um, 
you find that in the bottom left corner room, Toad's ripped out one of the drawers and um, kind of like uh, tit shit all over the floor. Um, but in the, <laughs> other, in the other rooms, um, you find kind of like the standard stuff you'd expect. There's personal photographs, things like that. However, in the uh, bottom left room, because you did quite good, because um, you've been taking your time to do this quite strongly. Ah, he's a um, dildo again. Because you've been taking your time to do this quite strongly, you manage to find that um, there's a, an aluminium case, an aluminium steel case in the bottom of uh, one of the wardrobes that was hidden under a couple of piles of um, old uh, sort of jackets and things, um, and like uniform bits that had fallen off hangers. Um, you crack open the aluminium steel case and you find inside a holdout pistol. Um, it's a different make to the one you're carrying, um, but but it's a, a sort of got compatible ammunition in it. Um, However, when you take the cartridge out the out, when you take the magazine out the uh, holdout pistol, uh, you find it's only got two rounds <laughs> in it. Okay. You no, know, it replaces the one I put into the control mechanism I'll, up by the door. I'll take, yeah, I'll take the, I'll take the holdout pistol, the new one. Okay, and... so you can take the pistol in the two rounds. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And you throw my pistol flesh bag back in, you know. Drawer of crap. Pick okay, up so my drawer of crap of again. Flesh and, and all sorts of things. Yeah, it'll just food packets as much as I can carry in the drawer, the plant that's still wiggling around, and a airtight bag of flesh. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna walk out this door. Okay. So you walk out into the corridor, there's, there's an open set of windows in front of you, uh, massive great big windows that span most of the corridor. Again, this has got a reinforced floor, so it's obviously designed for cargo transportation. Um, to your left, you've got the, the reinforced airlock doors that you saw on the sort of airlock bay um, back on the uh, sort of docking section of the ship, uh, start the docking set of the station. And the windows give you a nice big open view out towards where the docking platform is. You can see the bridge reaching down onto the docking platform. Um, and you can see the big flat docking platform with the open area around it and like no ship sitting on the docking platform at all. Um, even though, you know, you landed here a while ago. Um, <laughs> just just <laughs> rubbing it in, you know, just twist the knife a little bit. Yeah. Um, and you look out across the moon and the, the moon is, is a, a rolling grey and, and some patches of red so where there's obviously different minerals in the, the moon dust. Um, and the sun's coming up and you can see the crack in the planet and it's, it's actually quite beautiful in a way. Yeah, I, I haven't bothered looking at like any of that. I'm just walking with a okay, lot of crap. <clears throat> like I, I've, I've noticed it, but I'm not taking the time just gonna... to observe it. It's just like, oh look, a planet's coming up. Screw it. I'm, I'm just going to follow because uh, uh, he said nothing about what he's doing and I'm kind of interested now. Yeah, you're, you're perhaps a slightly concerned as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat worried that he's going to just off himself here. <laughs> wow, thanks for the vote of support. <laughs>